let's see here. I think the sound effect board only works when we're recording. You just got to turn up the oh, volume. Oh, yep, here it is. Yeah, I didn't know that you can make other ones. There we go. You know what? We're just going to start the show with that. Because that's a fucking crowd of people cheering that Tyler Stanaway is back on the Endless Endeavor podcast. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Wait for all my emails to come through. Um, so yeah, we're back with podcast regular Tyler Stanaway. What's does, up, everybody? Does not need an introduction. But something that I've been getting hit up by or hit up for by people more and more are people saying, bro, I want to start my own podcast. Yep. I want to start my own podcast. And it's funny because sometimes you'll see haters. It's like, fucking everybody has a podcast now. Good. So? Yeah, good. Yeah. You know? You remember, the the more people that are speaking their truth and what they believe in, then the more people that can receive that. And, you know, fucking, we talk about it on the show all the time. It doesn't matter if you get 50 downloads or 50,000 downloads. If you're putting out good content, you're you're elevating people's lives. Someone's going to hear something you had to say and it only has the potential to fucking help them. And so when you told me that you were doing your podcast and and remember the recording window is the front one, not the top. Um when you told me you're starting a podcast, I was fucking stoked. But you're the type of person that's like all right, Let's fucking, let's dive in. Let's figure out all the little details and make it happen. And you're on what, episode 17 now or something? Yeah, I think <laughs> this week will be 18. So this episode will be called The Compassionate Viking because that's the the title of Tyler's show. And uh, <clears throat> man, it's fucking good. It is. You know what I mean? It's good. And when I listen to my early episodes, I'll go back and listen to them and kind of like, fuck, dude, like, how did that get any downloads? I sucked back then. Yeah. But bro, it's like jujitsu. It's like fucking forging. It's anything. You put enough time in, you're only going to get better. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? And you can't just start something thinking that you're going to be a fucking pro at it. I think that's a part of society's problem is we always want the quick fix, right? The push of the button or the pill or whatever. No one wants to put in any effort and commitment. And so, therefore, we see a bunch of people never, never starting an endeavor. Yeah. And, and bro, like the fitness industry is the perfect example of that because everybody wants the easy out. Mm -hmm. There is no easy out. Dude, you know I was just saying? listening to Andy, Andy Frisella talk about, I was listening to one of his podcasts and he's like, some commercial talking about weight loss. You don't have to be on a diet. You don't have to work out. You don't have to fucking do any of this stuff. Literally just be a slob and lay in bed. And this will totally make you look fit like us. And it's like, that's a fucking lie. Not only is it a lie. Let's say that there was <clears throat> some avenue to where you could wake up and look like Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime. Right. I'm telling you right fucking now. It wouldn't mean 1% of what it means when you obtain something through years of fucking grit. It's like your purple belt, bro. And I always tell people, as far as the jujitsu journey goes, man, I think purple belt is almost as big of a deal as black belt because that shows I'm all in, I'm fucking dedicated, and I'm starting to get very, very fucking good. Yeah. Think if you could just wake up and download jujitsu and you, you went to bed the day after uh, you got choked out by grandpa mm -hmm. and then the next day you wake up who the fuck you are today. It wouldn't mean anything. Not at all. Not at all. That's one of the things that I talked to the white belts actually about is I totally understand what it's like to be a white belt and come in and suck and get your ass kicked and feeling like a fish out of water coming for a few weeks or a month and feeling like you're still a fish out of water. But at the same time, it goes two ways. If if you could just instantly be good at it, then every single person would have a black belt in jujitsu and it wouldn't be nearly as cool. It wouldn't mean shit. It wouldn't mean anything. And for two, it is it is the journey. And I didn't get that really, really up until recently where the journey of, let's say I'm going to, I'm going to roll with someone and they fuck me up or they submit me. I can then, I'm now at a point now where I realize where I went wrong. I can pinpoint like the reason why I just got armbarred from Greg was not because 
I have a shitty armbar defense. I let he he passed my guard a long time ago. Yes. Yep. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No, not, that's a. I'm, I love um, that you're not only seeing that but articulating that. Yes, because I've noticed. You know, look at some of the kids or some of the white belts. They want to learn these escapes and these defenses to submissions. And, you know, if I'm if I'm a partner with a white belt, I'll say, like, don't think that this is going to fucking work the way that you think it's going to work. And I'm not shitting on jujitsu. It does fucking work. Yeah. But you have to remember that. Let's say I'm in a rear naked choke on my back. If someone gets on my back and puts me in a rear naked choke and I'm trying to defend the choke, my chances of defending is far slimmer than his is at submitting. Of course, because he has the dominant position. That's why it's the dominant position. Right? He has that's, the high ground, so that, to speak. And that's know? why you get points for that. That's why in UFC, you see people fucking people up in those positions is because the best way to, uh, in my opinion, defend that rear naked choke is don't let someone get on your back. Exactly. Why were you even on the bottom in the first place? So, bro, what a, I always say this, like jujitsu mirrors life, right? Yeah. So many things and so many lessons that you learn on the mats apply in business, relationships, everything, right? Yep. And you just made me think of something that, again, jujitsu mirrors life, where if you lose in life, like your business implodes, you get a divorce, like something that you would chalk up as a loss, right? Yep. This isn't what I wanted to happen, but this is where I'm at. Well, just like you said, the person's on your back choking you. That's not where the problem occurred. Yep. The problem occurred fucking 17 steps ago when he started hitting a Toriando and you weren't able to capture his hip. Yep. And think about that. That's the same thing in life, dude. It is. It's not like, oh, I woke up and my marriage is in shambles and my woman left me. Fuck, poor me. Bro, look back fucking six weeks, six months, six years. Yep. Where did you fuck up? Absolutely. To start yourself on the loser trajectory instead of the winner trajectory yeah and bro and it's like you know if two ships are sailing alongside each other and one shifts its its uh, course by one degree you might not notice that for the first 15 20 minutes but two months down the road they're going to be in different continents yes and that's life bro that is and that goes back to <clears throat> what we started the podcast on with the journey that if you don't go through these things, you know, two, three, four, five times a week, every week for fucking half a decade, then you won't be able to pinpoint where you're making these errors and these flaws. If it was just to wake up tomorrow and then I'm as good as I am today, sure, my skills are as good as I am today, but do I grasp and understand the concepts of what I'm doing the same? Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like, just being able to have the skills... Well, take it like jujitsu. If if just being able to have the skills of a black belt is one thing, but being able to understand the whys, the whens, the wheres, and the concepts is when you start to become like a teacher. Yeah. And just doing jujitsu is not the same as teaching jujitsu. And for me, that goes with a lot of things, whether it's jujitsu or work. Just being able to do something is completely different than being able to fully understand and embody what you're trying to teach. And to me, that's where the journey comes in of just being in it day after day after day after day. And you start to see all the little nuance and all the little discrepancies in the fine print that as you progress, that fine print becomes like bold outline to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. It's not way back in the fucking the corners because we're doing things all the time. You, I see you teaching all the time and you're doing things that your brain doesn't even know that you're doing by s switching a grip from here to here. Yeah. Or you're going to get swept, take the, the trap and roll from mount. You're going to get rolled over. You immediately put your palm up. Yep. Yeah. Okay, All well, those little subconscious things. Those, the fine print. Whereas the fucking, the white belt does it and he about snaps his wrist when he gets swept. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. to go through the journey. Fuck man. It's, uh, and the gym is a really, watching the trajectory and watching all of these new people, you know, we have phases like we had the Skylar Easton white belt, white, mafia, white phase. belt mafia becoming blue belt mafia. Yep. But we got a new white belt mafia now. Yes, we do. And it's, it's interesting because as I sit back and observe as a coach, 
I understand the journey better each time we go through it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the brand new guys, it's fucking awesome watching. Bro, they can level up in a practice or two. Yes. You know? And, uh, you know, I gave Josh a little shout out yesterday at lineup because he did something. And it's so funny because if any other human being witnessed this, it wouldn't mean shit. But I had him mounted, right? And I know what he's, I know, what should you be doing if people have you mounted? Fucking trying to buck and, and roll, right? And like get them off base. Yep. But if you have a black belt on top of you and you buck to one side, I, I'm anticipating that. I'm ready to shift my hips, shift my weight or post. And he didn't have good arm control. So I was able to post and bro, check this out. He bucked to his left, right? So he offset my weight and I had to post with my right. Yep. Simultaneously, he grabbed a grip on the outside of my left knee. Okay. And so the second I posted and my weight shifted from him to the mat, he put my knee and he pushed it in the air and reclaimed half guard. Ah. All in literally yeah, a, a half, half a of second. a second. Yep. And it worked. <laughs> yeah. And I was and I was thinking, I was like, dude, you're this big, strong guy that people when you think about rolling with Josh, you think about, fuck, man, if that dude gets on top of me, it's going to be a long night because yep. he's a big, strong dude. Yeah. And I said, you see what you just did? That wasn't big, strong dude jujitsu. That was finesse from your guard. It's fucking awesome, dude. Fuck yeah, dude. And he was stoked about it, I you know? Bet. And it's like those, those little things, those little wins, you stack little wins, you stack little wins, you stack little wins, and then one day you're a fucking black belt. And again, where jujitsu mirrors life. Because again, Andy Frisella talks about this all the time. Stack your wins. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be, I burn the candle at both ends. I'll sleep when I'm dead. Yeah. Like all that like machismo fucking right. approach to winning. Like Andy will say like, there's there's days I'm done with my, my critical task list by noon. And now that gives me the rest of the day to be me or mm -hmm. read books or do what I need to do. Right. And it's like, dude, as long as you stack little wins in whatever you're doing, like your fucking farm. You yeah. know what I mean? Stack yeah. little wins. You can't lose. Nope. That's nope. just it. That's the formula. And everybody wants this like fucking, you know, how many fucking self-help books are out there and all this crazy shit. And again, it's because most people want an easy out. That quick fix. And it ain't fucking there. Nope. You got to start stacking your wins and fucking visualizing what winning looks like and then going through the actions to follow what you've created in your head. And then it just fucking happens, dude. And I know I'm fucking pretty new on this journey of like entrepreneurship and building businesses, building brands, but to see what's happened in 24 months, it's fucking real. Dude, dude. It, it's, it's, it's so crazy that it's like magical. It is magical. You know what I mean? Like, bro, it's, like let's go off on a tangent and then, and then I really want to jump into the compassionate Viking too, because the whole reason I had you over here. I want to see my friends win too. Yeah. I want your podcast to blow the fuck up. If you've listened to Tyler's shit and you like what he stands for and you like his message and you have a product to, that you want to be part of his fucking show, like hit him up. Absolutely. Like this journey is fun. Partnerships with good companies and sponsors and, and like, it's what it's all about, man. That's it. And I want to help you in any way that I can. Well, but, we'll, uh, when we get into it, I'll, I'll go, I'll fucking deep dive and go into everything that I'm about and why this all started. Fuck yeah. But the, the power of visualization, right? Yes. We talked about it the other day because uh, I flew home from Florida. I went down there for the August Burns Red uh, Heart Support Festival, which was a fucking cool weekend. Well, I can't do that kind of stuff very often <laughs> anymore. A fucking drunk and high and heavy metal oh. festival for eight hours straight. But uh, I listened to the book, The Secret on, on the flight home. And it's only a four hour book on audible. So I listened to the whole thing. And again, I was listening to uh, real AF and Andy said like, he's like, bro, I was dating this like hippie chick. And she came to me and told me about the power of visualization. And he's like, I thought that was fucking stupid. Like get the fuck out of here. you know? And yep. he goes, but then I realized I'm 28 years old and I still live with my parents. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And he's like, and sure, I was already starting my entrepreneurial path and trying to build a brand and, and, and build what, ultimately became first form but at the end of the day i'm 28 years old and i live at home that's loser shit that's loser shit right yep and so he's like and this chick's showing me a tool that maybe there's something to it and he started doing it and he goes and it fucking worked 
I started fucking visualizing the things that I want and how I want it and how I want to win. And it started fucking happening. And he goes, and it was, that was the book that she told me to listen to or told me to read. Yeah. So I listened to the whole thing and I'm like, okay, I've already done a lot of that kind of over the last couple of years, almost not like with the intent, but just thinking about like, what's the next step? Where do I want to be? You yeah. know, I came home and I fucking made this vision board. Okay. I just got done with it like an hour ago. Oh, here, I'll just put it up. So if you're fucking watch it, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see it. And it's just, it's all the different aspects of my life that I want to see in the fucking near future. Yep. And so it starts with like a home oh, money isn't everything. Well, you know what? If, if you live in a house like that on the lake, where my boat's right here and my kids can go fucking fishing. Like to me, a house on the lake is powerful. Yes. I think I grew up on a river and I always liked that. And so I've always wanted a house on the lake. Fuck. I'm putting the house on the lake on the vision board. And who says that can't be your house? That's going to be my house. Absolutely. It's going to be your house. You know what I'm saying? And then it's uh, <clears throat> my retirement plan. I want to fucking sail the world. Yep. So I just want to look at these things and I want to think about them often. Visualizing. And, and what that does is, and they're even talking about like on a molecular level, the intent mm -hmm. behind your thoughts can actually physically manifest things. They're starting to find in like the physics of it that there's something going on. This isn't just fucking crazy. It's not woo woo shit. No, it's, it's real. It's real shit. And I'm so happy that you have came across this because I hardly, you know, I know all about this, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but you know, um, you don't really find other people who, who take it seriously. Well, and also like, <clears throat> The little caveat on this, and I'll go through the rest of the stuff that's on the board for people that aren't that aren't watching that are listening. But it's not just like you know who Eddie Gallagher is. Uh, He's a seal that got charged with murder and then he won his oh, case. Yes, yes, I do. Cool fucking dude, okay. right? At some point, I'll probably cross paths with him because we have a lot of mutual friends. But he posted something the other day, and it goes the power of manifestation. And this dude had like this little like tinfoil thing on his head he's like you don't have to work for it just think about it <laughs> and it's like okay i get it that it sounds fucking stupid right yep. and you can't just sit in your fucking bed and eat doritos no. and manifest it you have to think about it and then you have to follow that path with the action that's necessary absolutely like it's not a just oh i'm gonna fucking just be a lazy fat slob and everything's gonna work out no it's no. put the intentions out there and then follow the intentions with the actions you know? I, I think that people don't understand how powerful their intentions truly are because what you, what you put your energy and intention into, you attract what you think you attract. And, and, and according to the secret that goes both ways, both ways. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't understand, uh, like the English language of putting not, or I don't and stuff in front of it. For instance, let's just say I want a Ferrari. Okay. So I can sit there and think I want a Ferrari, I want a Ferrari, blah, blah, blah. But if I think I don't want a shitty car, it doesn't pick up the I don't want. It just picks up shitty car. I'm going to start attracting shitty car, not the Ferrari. Yeah. You have to put what it actually is you want. Most people are fearful in life. They're constantly thinking about the vulnerabilities they have. I'm sick of being fucking broke. I hate that, being broke. I'm fucking I'm being sick broke of being sucks. fat. I'm all this. I'm sick of it. Doesn't the 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 universe doesn't respond to that? It responds to like the noun or the verb itself. So, and, and I would guess like it's not that the universe is dissecting language, but it's dissecting energy. It's the manifestation. Yeah. Right. I don't or I want is not manifestation it's trees it's cars it's love it's houses it's 1.5 million it's check mat those are all things yeah and so when we use our intentions we need to make sure that we're actually putting our intention where we want it to go for instance on my first podcast with ayahuasca with you yep i had brought up the intentions right and what I found is, is that they want you to have extreme detail on your intentions when you go into the ceremony, because I think the metaphor I used last time was like a, a bow and arrow and a bullseye. You want, 
your intention to be the bullseye and then your actions are going to be the arrow. So you want to hit where you want to fucking hit. And if yeah. your intention is just bullshit, I want to be wealthy. Well, what does that consist of? And what is wealth to you? Yeah. You know, that, that looks different for every single person. And then also, I think I read the secret when I was 19. The same thing occurred to me was like, you can't just sit here in your room and envision everything that you want and smoke weed and play video games all day and expect that to happen. Yeah. It starts with, in my opinion, it's not so much the how. I think, I think I'll just use me because I can't speak for anyone else. But in my personal experience, if I worry too much about the how, I over, like I, I, I make it harder than it should be. I overanalyze it. I get, I start to get in my head of how, how the fuck am I going to do this? How is it ever going to happen? I've started to not worry so much about the how focus on my intention, believe that it will manifest and do the things necessary to get me to where I would need to go. Yeah. And then what I've noticed in my own life is I'm going to call it the universe. You can call it God, whatever it is, a higher power, something that is more powerful than me somehow aligns people or or times or appointments or dates or somehow shit just starts lining up that further progresses me down that path yes and and if you're on the outside looking in sometimes it seems unfucking believable yeah like almost out of the realm of possibility yeah and once i've seen things happen that feel like they're out of the realm of possibility and then it happened it lets me know, bro, nothing's out of the realm of possibility. That's why in the, in the top fucking thing, it's a picture of Joe Rogan in his studio. Because I'm going to be sitting across from him at some point. Yeah. You I know what I mean? It. Absolutely. That's, like, that's going to happen. That's going to happen. You know? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I'll just go through this board real quick. Because again, I'm putting my intentions out there, right? Yes. I'm building the fucking nice new studio in the gym. You know, the current kids room downstairs, yep. Yep. that's going to be our new fucking man cave yep. where we get to hang out and fucking record and kick it and have fun. Hell yeah. Um, new York Times bestseller. That's kind of a reach. Yeah. But bro, here's the thing. I want to write a book. Yep. I want to get started this year. I doubt it'll be finished this year, but <clears throat> I don't want to write a book that's not received. I want to write a book that changes motherfuckers lives, dude. Yep. Yeah. I want my book to go to the top. Yep. And I believe that it will. Because if I don't, if it's not going to go to the top, why the fuck am I wasting my time? I got a lot of good shit happening right now. If I'm going to put my energy into a book, I want it to fucking be real and be successful. And you see those intentions? I can feel the vibration and the frequency of those intentions yeah. coming off of you. And it makes me think, why can't you be the best at everything that you do? But yeah, exactly. Why? Someone, there's lots of people that have fucking New York bestsellers. Okay, so is are they some special fucking person? No, nope. you know I shouldn't say they're not special, but you know what I'm saying. Like, it's it's obviously an attainable goal, right? You know, now I'm not completely delusional either. If you told me like, dude, beat Nim's Purge's record of climbing the 14 peaks, okay, now right. <laughs> this is where <clears throat> I feel like your I feel like your intentions have to be something that is suited within who you are and your capabilities. That's it. It needs to be attainable I'm not gonna, to you. Yeah, I'm not going to go outrun Usain Bolt. No. You know what I'm saying? No. I can have all the vision boards I want, but I think I think it's very clear that your vision board has to be rooted in honesty to yourself. Yeah. You know, and that's why right in the center of it, I put one of my favorite sayings, like no shortcuts to the top. Yeah. Because I want to think about that every day. If I want all of this stuff to come to fruition, again, it's not laying in my bed watching Netflix. It's, there are no shortcuts to the top. So it's going to be fucking long, hard and arduous, but that's how I know it's going to happen. I have a picture of when, uh, I think I was one of my fittest of my life. Cause I think it's important to reflect on your physical body and be like, man, it, I know what it's like to be an elite athlete and it's attainable. And I've been there and keep that as part of your life, you know, like always, always push the envelope on your physicality and it's like yeah sure father time is going to catch up with us all but there's always a best version of ourselves at any given time in your life well that's it and, and when father time does come do you want to be a fat piece of shit on your deathbed or do you want to know that you fucking were a capable man or woman all the way up to the end yep not one time in your life were you a fucking burden yeah exactly bro 
And then right next to the the physical body picture is a spiritual picture of of glowing chakras. Yep. Like I'm just starting to get more and more into that side of life. Mm-hmm. And it's just as important. If not, maybe it's more important. I think that's why we're not taught about it, man. Yeah, because it, it empowers people. Absolutely. When you know that you are a being of energy and a being of light and that your intentions and your thoughts can manifest real fucking shit in real time, you start teaching children about this in preschool and start telling them about their chakras and moving energy. Bro, like Stefan has known about this stuff since he was a little boy. Yeah. There's some people whose parents just had an understanding of this that passed that knowledge along. And for a long time, used to think like, man, that's fucking crazy. Yeah. He's a very fucking successful, awesome human being. Yeah. You know? Oh, dude, I'm, I connected right away yeah, with him. Yeah, of course, like, dude, dude. This fucking guy gets it. He gets it, man. The next to that is that, like, it's a picture of a packed, packed jiu-jitsu academy right under the Checkmat Lake Stevens banner. Yeah. Because that's going to be us. And, bro, that might already be us. No shit. Like, if we have our grand opening party and I say I want every single one of our members to show up, we're going to have that picture in no time, Absolutely, dude. dude. fucking awesome, dude. Dude, it uh, is. It's so cool. Next to that is just a picture of the range because, man, like... That that fucking piece of dirt that we cleared out and p- drove a fucking bulldozer through and dumped some rock down, it's changing our fucking lives, dude. Yeah. It's led to a partnership with Fieldcraft and 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 it's it's nurtured my friendship with Glover. Fieldcraft was out here again last weekend teaching survival a survival course out in the woods. Fucking you hey, know? Dude, that's so and sick. And it's like and I'm flying down to uh I'm flying down to Salt Lake City. Actually Heber City is where he's at to discuss like some some official partnerships moving forward with different programs he wants to bring jujitsu into the preparedness mindset because you as everybody knows glover teaches preparedness and survival and he's like you know the one thing that i think survival needs that that we're lacking right now is an understanding of just physical conflict and he's like bro you you're the guy to fucking bring this to fieldcraft there's a million jujitsu black belts that are cool motherfuckers, but he wants to do it with me. You know magical. what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, it's magical, bro. magical, man. It's cool. And then next to that, it's the Endless Endeavor logo with 1.5 million downloads next to it. And I want that to happen in 2023. That's what I want. Yeah. We're right under a million right now, which is crazy. That is right? crazy. But but that's two year journey to get to a million. So I want it to be another one year to get to the next half right stack the wins man yeah stack the fucking wins and then lastly or no there's two more things right in the center 42k my first annual salary as a u.s marshal was forty two thousand dollars living outside of los angeles california like i moved my family down there and it was you're, you're basically living in poverty that's all they fucking pay you as Bro, a u.s marshal i got hired as a gs5 right and here's the stupid thing all the other kids in my class were gs7s because they say if you come out of the military we'll hire you your military will suffice in place of a college degree but the kids that have college degrees are recognized as like more accomplished so they get a higher ranking right out of the gates they came in as gs7s Mm -hmm. and i came in as gs5 and i'm like i got 14 combat deployments and this this fucking dude went to some community college. Yeah. Like, what the fuck are we talking about? But that's neither here nor there. I've, I've separated myself for many reasons because yeah. they're just out of touch with reality. But my first year, I made $42,000. I want to make $42,000 the month of December this year. That's fucking, that's awesome. You know what I'm saying? No, like, dude, and I'm going to do it. Why can't you? That's the thing. Is and, I, bro, and bro, the reason I want to bring this up is because like money's a weird topic for a lot of people. They think if you talk about money or if you have goals of getting rich, like, you, you know, a lot of people say like, dude, you, you know, like I grew up in the trades and, and my dad fucking turned wrenches and like, as, as did my dad. But a lot of people have kind of had to put a sour taste in their mouth to getting fucking rich because if, if you came from a blue collar family, man, rich people were the enemy, mm-hmm. you know, they steal all the money and they have all the nice things and they're keeping us down, bro. That's again, that's all lies that are pushed on us to keep us down. It's victim mentality, bro. All the fucking, all the political elite cocksuckers 
are rich as fuck. Yep. And if and if they're fucking getting rich, fuck you. We can get rich too. Absolutely. And it's a mindset. It is a mindset. You know? No one's fucking keeping anybody down. No. That's that, what people don't understand. Nobody's keeping you down. You're keeping yourself down. 100%, bro. And then the last thing is just a picture of my family, man. It's like all of my daughters and then the boys. Because, dude, the boys are 18 and 20 now. And it's like I'm losing this intimate connection that I had with them. And I'm not even saying that in like negative connotations. It's because they're grown ass men and they're doing life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, you don't fucking hang out with fucking like adults all the time. You're out doing your own shit, mm -hmm. but it's like, there's a part of me that kind of hurts my heart too. Cause it's like, fuck man, these are my wingmen for years. Yeah. You but, know, but I have noticed too. I mean, I haven't been around the whole time that you were with the boys, but even the last two or three years that I've, seen you with them or hung out with them it's kind of cool because you're a father figure but you're not actually their dad yeah which makes them feel super close to you like they can come to you about their fucking problems and as they transition from you know teenagers to young men your guys's relationship is gonna is gonna switch to fucking instead of you being like dad to, um, to homies yeah exactly you know what no, I, mean? I think about all the time it's 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 morphing from mentorship to friendship absolutely and i actually think that that's something that families should do as well yeah and like and i learned that lesson from my dad my 18th birthday and i, I think i've told the story on the podcast before he's like bro come out in the fucking garage we need to have a conversation and i was afraid of my dad mm -hmm. he was and I, I shouldn't say like, I mean, he wasn't abusive or he wasn't a dick or anything, but he was just, he was rough around the edges, dude. Yeah. And you never wondered what he was thinking. And if you thought I was being a fucking pussy or a bitch, he'd fucking tell me that, you yeah. know, like straight shooter. And he goes, listen up, you, uh, you're 18 now it means you're a man. You signed up, you're leaving for the army. My job is done. And he goes, you can come to me and we can talk and I can, I can offer you guidance but it's not my job to make sure that everything is going okay with you and that you're safe and that I'm and that you're taken care of. That's your own fucking job now. He goes, so the role of dad is now moving to the role of friend. And yeah. he puts his hand out and shook my hand and we became like best friends in a moment. And for the rest of his life, I was 18 and he died when I was 35. So I had, you know, a decade and a half of this guy who was cool as fuck, dude. Yeah. And I never knew it because he rode me hard. That's because he rode me hard, bro. Like I remember I'd come home if kids would bully me or I had like incidents at the bus stop and shit. And uh, he's just like, I don't fucking care. Yeah. Someone's being fucking mean to you. Fix it. Yep. Deal with your fucking problems. And like, dude, if a dad said that to kids these days, Oh my, how insensitive, me. you know, <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I just talked to the boys the other day about, you know, they're fucking dicking around. I wanted them to stack a bunch of firewood and it, it had been all day. They barely got it done. The next day, Vanessa has them do it again. They barely get it done. So I go out there. I'm fucking mad, dude. I'm like, look, boys, it took you two fucking days to do this. So I go out there and I time myself and I did. I wasn't going as fast as I could. Just a normal fucking speed. Took me about an hour. I come back inside. I said, look, I just did what you were supposed to do two fucking days ago in one hour. Now, I know that you boys are not as strong as me. You don't work as good as me, but there's two of you. So between the two of you, I'm going to give you an extra half an hour. Okay. So next time dad fucking tells you to stack wood. You literally have an hour and a half. Uh -huh. <laughs> After that, yeah, yeah. there's going to be fucking consequences. Well, they were kind of like, you're you're so mean to us. You're so hard on us. I said, look. Is that what they said? Yeah. Bro, Okay. kids never used to say that shit. I That's, said. Like, I would not dare say that to my dad. I said, you think this is hard? <laughs> yeah. Listen, my job is is to raise you to be successful, independent, savage young men and women. Okay. That is my job. I am not your fucking friend. Uh huh. I love you and I'll take care of you and we will do th things, but I'm not your friend. Friends sneak out friends, steal shit friends fucking scheme together. I ain't fucking doing any of those things with you. Okay. When you're 18 years old 
And I feel, not you feel, when I feel that you are independent, strong, savage young men who are cool. And my job is done. I will will be your friend. Until then, I need to make you strong, independent, cool fucking men and women. Yeah. And the difference is, is that when you're not being that and you guys are being fucking pussies and limp dicking around, I'm going to come and get on you. And if you think that I'm being mean, get your fucking shit together, boys. And they're like, yes, sir. (laughs) Dude. And they're fucking, your boys are awesome. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, It's, it's strange that we've arrived in a place in society where we give the kids so much of a vote in how everything goes. Yeah. And I'm not saying like, I'll sit down and get my kids' opinions on things. I'm not just, it's not just the Greg show. I'm not a fucking dictator. Right. But at the end of the day, I am. You know what I mean? At the the end of the day, I'm going to be calling the shots here. Yeah. Right. And dude, you see so many fucking parents and kids that fucking, I mean, I'm not going to give any examples by name because it's just unfair, but I see kids at my jujitsu academy talk to their parents in a way that I don't fucking care if you're 10. I'll fucking smack the taste out of your mouth if you talk to me like that. Yep. And the thing is, you're not doing them a favor by letting them just overtly be disrespectful to authority. What do you think's next? College, workforce, military, uh, even even relationships. When you have some type of when you have to interact with other human beings, there's a reasonable way to do it and there's an unreasonable way to do it. And if you nurture them in a manner that allows them to conduct themselves in the unreasonable manners, their whole life is fucked, bro. It is. And it's setting them up to maybe get a fucking beat down one day. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly, dude. Dude. Uh, you this, can't fucking talk to people like that. No. And you're bringing this up. I got it. I got to say this real quick. No, please do. Okay. I had this job at, I'm going to say all of it at the boiler room down in Seattle, Washington. Okay. I don't know what the boiler room is. We're doing custom metal work. Okay. Okay. We're just, yeah, doing custom metal work. And I have this foreman, and his name is Thad. Okay? T H A D. Thad. <laughs> I used to call him Thaddeus. <laughs> okay. Anyways, Thad uh, proceeds to talk to everyone, whether it's a general contractor, the owner of the company, me, the fucking waitress. I've observed for like two months of being with this guy. It doesn't matter who he talks to, he's an absolute dickhead. To the point where one day we're out on this uh, job in West Seattle out on Al- Alki Beach and another guy, Jesus, who uh, I was working with, had pounded these pins into the concrete and he didn't put a nut on the top. So it galled the it galled the, uh, the threads, the threads. Okay. So then we couldn't get a, um, you know, a nut back on. So Thad comes down. So he and, fucked up. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Jesus fucked up. Yep. Thad comes down and starts ripping me a new one. And I'm not one to just throw someone under the bus like, oh, it wasn't me. It was Jesus. I pretty much just was like, okay, you know, roger that. And he's like, you don't seem too fucking concerned. And he starts calling me like a stupid piece of shit. Oh, fuck, bro. And we're standing in this fucking backyard of this multi-million dollar home. And I go, has anyone ever kicked your fucking teeth in for talking to a grown man like that? And he goes, what'd you say? I said, Have you ever got your teeth kicked in from talking to a full grown man like this? And he goes, you can't say that to me. I go, I just did. He points up on the roof and he goes, the contractors are up there watching us. I go, I don't give a fuck, dude. I don't fucking care. And he goes, you're fired. And I was like, oh, okay. So I continued to work. I didn't leave. Didn't know if I was getting paid or not. I was so mad, Greg. The day goes on. I finish my workout. We go back to the shop right before I leave. Thad goes, Hey, why don't you come up into my office and talk to me? Okay. I walk up there and he goes, I already know where this is going, bro. (laughs) He goes, what happened today can never happen again. I go, absolutely not. It won't happen again because the next time I'm going to kick the fuck out of you. (laughs) And he goes, his eyes just, and I go, I'm serious, Thad. The way that you talk to people, not just me, everyone is unreasonable, dude. And that's why I asked, have you ever gotten your ass beat by talking to people like this? Because I'm like on the verge of fighting you. And he goes, I don't even remember what he said, but I go, he reflect. Not really. No. Okay. So he goes, 
or I ended up saying, I can't, I can't stand up for Kevin, the owner or the coffee lady or whatever. It's That's not, not your responsibility. Me, but yeah. to me, you will not talk to me like this, dude. Like, even if I, for one, I didn't make the mistake, but even if I did. Exactly. It's not. I'm not a stupid piece of shit. Hang out with me and you'll see that I'm not a stupid piece of shit. Okay. So this goes on. We pretty much just, I, I tell him that can't happen again. Don't be that way. A few months go by and I will never, I will never forget this. He comes out one morning and he goes, Hey Tyler, will you grab the screws on the end of the bench and blacken them? Which is just like a, it just turns shit black and then put them in a Ziploc bag. Sure. So I did fucking took the pile, put it in a cup, poured the acid in there, rinse it out, fucking dried them off on a paper towel and put it in a Ziploc bag. Done. I don't know how many hours later on the afternoon, he's up on like the little mezzanine thing and he goes, Hey, how many fucking screws did you put in that bag? And I go, I have no idea. He goes, you have no idea. I go, no, I have no idea. He goes, how many fucking screws did you blacken? And I go, I have no idea. However many screws was on the the end of the bench. You told me this verbatim. Hey, Tyler, will you blacken the screws on the end of the bench and put them in a Ziploc bag? That's what I did. So however many screws is however many was on the end of the bench. He comes down the stairs and gets nose to nose with me and goes, what's your fucking problem? And I didn't know, like, I didn't know what to do. I, this is the words that came out of my mouth. I'm going to hurt you (laughs) just like that. And he goes, what? I go, my problem is, is I'm going to hurt you. And he goes, you can't talk to me that way. You're you're fired. (laughs) And I go, do you sign my checks? Yeah. And he goes, no. I go, then how are you going to fire me? And he goes, well, I'm the foreman. I go, I don't give a fuck Thad. let's go talk to the owner. And he goes, you're going to hurt me. And I go, yeah. And if I get fired right now, you're definitely getting hurt. I'm going <laughs> to take you outside and beat the shit out of you, dude. So I walk upstairs and I go into the, the owner's office and I go, Kevin, I can't work here anymore. What? what, what what's going on? I go, I'm going to, I'm going to hurt your foreman. I'm going to fight him. Every day I come to work, I wake up literally in fight mode. And it's unhealthy for me and I don't like it. I just want to work. And the way that he talks to me is unacceptable to me. And it's gotten to the point now where you have to lay me off. And he goes, well, I I can't just lay you off. I go, then you're going to lose a foreman. He ain't coming back to work. I'm literally going to fight him as hard as I can outside. And this is like before jujitsu. Yeah. (laughs) And he's like, well, what's going on? All of a sudden, boom, Thad fucking kicks the office door open comes in and he's screaming and yelling and i go see there you go that's exactly what i said i go does that seem like something that's reasonable to work with imagine trying to work next to this guy so i take the door and shove him out and lock it and i go this is what i mean i gotta go i said your foreman talks to people the most rude way i've ever even heard he talks to you this way And all I can think is no one ever taught him proper manners or behavior or respect. Somehow he's gotten to be 50 years old and he thinks that he can just act however the fuck he wants and get his way. And what I see now with these children at jujitsu or wherever else, if you just allow children to always get their opinion, say and act however the fuck they want and cower down to them, you're going to get a 50 year old dad. And luckily I was laid off. If that was now, he'd like be I, fucking dead. He would. I, I, I wouldn't have, I would have just, just fucking rolled him, him up. Yeah. yeah. Just fucking wham. And I would have said, this is what happens when you treat people like that, bro. It's real weird how it's funny. Cause I had a, I had a situation that the story made me think about because I used that fucking phrase verbatim, bro. I'll kick your fucking teeth down your throat. Yeah. And, uh, so it made me think of that story <laughs> cause it was when I was a contractor in Ramadi right? And I was a DOD contractor. So we were supporting the department of defense, AKA the military, right? Yep. So out in, out in Ambar where we were bouncing back and forth between Ramadi and Fallujah, we could go to any military base and they'd feed us, right? Okay. They'd let us go into the chow halls and I'd show them our, we had uh, cards that looked like cat cards, meaning the ones that the soldiers carry, but instead of a rank on it, it said GS, right? Government, uh, I don't even fucking know what GS stands for, but it's, uh, 
dude, we're all working together, right? Yep. So we have a, an operation that takes us into Baghdad and we don't go there very often. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know how the military structures, like how their, how their operations work when we're in, we were in the green zone and we're walking into this chow hall and there's a specialist out front, which is an E4. And he goes, uh, you need a military ID to come in here and eat. And I showed him our uh, State Department DOD cards. And he goes, oh, those don't work. Only only active duty service members can eat in our chow halls. And I said, bro, listen to me. I have a 16-man team that is here with a State Department diplomat, all right? We're clearly Americans, all right? There's no question who we are, uh-huh. right? And I said, and listen, if there's documents that you need filled out or if you need... Uh, if you need like some official from the state department to go ahead and clear this. So there's no confusion next time. Let me know what I need to do. But the fact is we're here now and we haven't eaten all day. And we're just trying to get some chow before we head back to Ambar. And he goes, Oh yeah, you know, I can't because it's, uh, I was told it's military one-on-one. This is the parameters they were given and nobody thinks outside of the box. Mm-hmm. Right. Right at this time, there's a full bird colonel, which is a high ranking officer okay. that's behind us in line. And, and, and me and the specialist weren't like, there wasn't an argument going on. We were just discussing, yep. right? The good energy between us. Yep. And this colonel goes, hey, what's taking so long up there? Are you not hearing what he said? And I turn around and I go, excuse me? And he goes, he said you don't have the right ID to get in the chow hall, so get out of line. Oh. And, and bro, I walked up to him and I said, Hey, sir, I'm not in the fucking military anymore. I'm a fucking civilian. If you fucking talk to me like that one more time, I'll take your Kevlar off your head and I'll smash your fucking teeth down your throat. I don't give a fuck if you're full bird. You Mm -hmm. feel me? And instantly, dude, instantly, his demeanor went from fucking this, I'm a full full bird colonel to like, (laughs) yep. Because it's like, hey, motherfucker, that just shows you what a cunt you are. Yep. Because you talk to people a certain way and you're used to them responding a certain way because of the in the little insignia that you pin on your collar. Mm-hmm. You think you can fuck. It's the same with the foreman. You think you can talk to people a certain way with disrespect because of your position. Yeah. And this is how backwards of a way of thinking of it is. It's because leadership, if you're if you're a foreman of a job site or you're a colonel, you're in a leadership position. A leader's entire job is to facilitate the success of his men or women. Yep. That's his fucking job. That's it. <clears throat> you can't facilitate the success of the people around you by treating them like shit. No. Like, it, it's not a hard fucking concept. And it's like my whole team, it, well, in the how the story played out is like, well, well, you know, you still can't go in here and there's no exceptions. And uh, and then my boss, who was also in line with me, mm-hmm. Because in the contractor world, I was the young guy on the team, but I was the front of the line. So I'm going to solve the problem with the guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like everybody has to fucking default to your, your, your project manager to take care of problems. We're a 16 man team. We have to take care of acquiring our chow. We have to take care of our vehicle maintenance. We have to take care of our fucking, our comm sec and getting our radios filled. Like we, we all take a leadership role. But as soon as he saw, like, oh, Greg's about to beat the fuck out of a full bird colonel, he walked up to the front. He's like, all right, Greg, he got your fucking point. Let's get the fuck out of here. Yep. It ain't it ain't worth a fucking international incident so we can eat dinner. Fuck that guy. And, and these were all Delta Force operators. I was like the only guy on the, not the only guy, but when Triple Canopy in the, or the early days, it was all Delta Force guys. And then they let in a handful of Rangers and Recons and SEALs and stuff. And you had to go through their selection, right? And so it's like, this fucking colonel is acting like an absolute cocksucker to fucking like seven Delta Force guys and a handful of fucking like Rangers and Recon guys. Bro, we're on the same fucking team. All these dudes have done this mission at the highest level and you won't even give them a fucking meal. You know? Dude. I wish I wish I fucking, you know, that was before the days of everyone had cameras and cell phones and shit. Yep. That shit would have went viral. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would have. Yeah, it would have. But yeah, and and, and dude, leadership is not a hard concept, but it's the ego in people. Like if, you know, there's a saying in leadership that I I used to say all the time. If you have to tell someone you're in charge of them, you aren't. Yeah. That's it. 
Like if, if I look at you as my leader and leadership is fluid too, like we've talked about it before. If tomorrow morning you and I are going to go forge knives, you're the leader. Yeah. Tell me what needs to happen, bro. Yeah. You know, and then we go to the range and uh, you're the leader. Exactly, dude. And, and I don't hold that against you. I'm not bitter because <laughs> yeah, of that. Yeah, I love dude. that. that. Bro, it's fucking bizarre. But again, that colonel and that foreman, this didn't start at the job site nope it started when they were little boys yes and they bitched at their dad when they were at jujitsu practice and the dad didn't say anything to him Mm -hmm. you know oh i don't want to hurt little johnny's feelings you know it's like dude (laughs) he's eight he's eight what do you mean his feelings are hurt all fucking day and it's the same thing like you know a dog wants to be disciplined yeah a a dog has a better self-worth and a better, just a better overall life experience. If you do, Hey, go sit on your rug and like have some fucking discipline because he's not just spinning out of control. Right. There's, there's boundaries and walls. Now, you know, your parameters. Yes. And that's why like wolves dude, like wolves like having an alpha. Yeah. You know, people always celebrate the alpha, the alpha, the alpha. Most people, most animals are content not being the alpha. Mm hmm. Just fucking find your role and fill it and do it well and and have some fucking discipline and have some fucking grace and life can go pretty smooth. Yeah. But no one's teaching their fucking kids that anymore. I know. And also, if you're not an alpha, don't go try to be an alpha. (laughs) I see that a lot too, where it's like, dude, alpha is not better than the rest of the pack. It's just that, that. That position suits that person the best or that animal the best. Not they're better than you. And bro, I I also say this about alpha and beta. That's also fluid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's why when when I hear men say like, well, you know, we're alpha males and it's like sometimes I'm an alpha male. Sometimes I'm I'm the most alpha motherfucker you've ever met. Yeah. Then there's other times when I will gladly take a backseat to who I deem more capable than me yeah like my buddy my buddy rancher who i don't know if he stopped by the gym a couple times he was a uh he was a cag guy that that led my team in ramadi Mm -hmm. and bro i was a kid when i met this man you know i mean i was 22 years old and it's funny too because i looked at him as like a god and he was probably 29 (laughs) you know what i mean (laughs) but bro now here here i am 42 and he's probably you know 50 and for the first time in my life i would say over the last few years I look at him as a peer as opposed to somebody that I like aspire to be, Yeah, you know, like a mentor. Yeah. And if that guy called me right now and said, Hey Greg, I need you to fucking get in your car. I need to drive to Idaho. There's some shit I got to take care of and I need your help. Roger that. And I would follow his instruction Mm -hmm. because I trust him. Yeah. And, uh, Dude, it's just the environment will dictate what kind of energy you need to give into it. And sometimes you need to be alpha. Sometimes you need to fucking keep your eyes open and shut your fucking mouth and take a backseat and be a beta. And that's okay. That's not, I'm not even saying that like negatively. No. That, that's how the world goes around, dude. No, yeah, find your role and when, and whatever best suits you. If, if you're not the fucking best at it and you're in a group of people who either a lot of them are better than you or one is significantly better than you, don't let your ego and pride get in the way. A lot of people, like once they've been in a, some type of leadership position, they think that just carries over to every aspect of life. Yeah. And it's like, bro, (laughs) cut that shit out, dude. Absolutely. Um, Fuck. We're an hour in now. So let's go down the compassionate Viking rabbit hole. Let's do it. I want to hear about kind of like what started the idea and, and how it came to fruition, dude. Fuck. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just start with this. I have been wanting to do a podcast for even before like COVID and shit. It's been on my mind for quite some time. I just didn't know how to go about it. I didn't know what needed to be done. And now hindsight's always 2020. I realize that I didn't have all the, I didn't have all my tools yet. Mm -hmm. So I've been thinking, especially after you got your podcast and all the podcasts that I listened to, I would send people podcasts that I personally found value in. And then these people, for the most part, don't listen. And I send them more and they don't listen. Some do, but most don't. And it got me thinking, okay, 
let's just take my own best friends, for instance. I want them to listen to fucking Greg or, or Joe Rogan or whatever it is, but they don't do it. But they'll listen to me. Mm -hmm. So this is what I have to do. Because people don't fucking listen, and most people won't turn off their CNN news to go listen to a podcast, that if I start my own podcast, at least the people that I directly encounter, I have a higher success rate at getting them to listen to me. And if everyone does this, then everyone's voice will be heard. Even like you said, whether it's 50 followers or 50,000 or 50 million. So finally I was like, fuck it. I'm going to do it because I've acquired. I feel like I have acquired a lot of information over the last 10 years of my life. That is information that a lot of, a lot of people have not came across. And if I just, live on the farm and fucking go to jujitsu and hang out in the woods, then the only people that get to receive any of this information are people that I directly talk to in person, Yeah, which is not very much. The jujitsu is the most interaction that I get the rest of the time I'm in the fucking woods. Yeah. So I decided that I would do that and that my goal with the compassionate Viking would be to share the information that I've acquired and then give a solution for it because most of the information is to be honest, shitty information, shitty information, not as in like shitty knowledge, but the information that I would tell you is not, is not very joyful. For instance, new world order or build back better. The great reset. Those are not cool things in my opinion. However, we have lots of solutions. And so the whole point of compassionate Viking is to start giving people solutions, positivity, hope, and success in their own lives so that we can all come together and, and get rid of the fucking new world order and all that bullshit. I have came up with something recently that is like my new vision for the podcast. And I don't even know that I've talked to you about this. I've brought it up a few, on a few of my own podcasts but now it's starting to become more clear. I guess the intention thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Not worry about so much how, just worry about what I want. And then as time goes on, the, the, the focus of the picture will become more clear. And then the how will be presented to me one step at a time. And what that is, is I want to build, and I don't know how we're, I'm actually going to do this yet. So it's still all in my head. I want to build a community and it doesn't have to be like a community where we all live in it. It could be worldwide community of, I don't have a name for it, but we'll just call it other compassionate Vikings. And it's people who want freedom and, uh, and want to fight against the tyrannical bullshit in the world. And they just want to be left alone. And I see that there's millions of people out there looking for this, bro. I think, I think the overwhelming majority of people I think so too are looking for this. So my goal is I'm thinking an app right now and I don't know long term if that's the right way or not. But right now I'm thinking of an app and I'm kind of stealing an idea from somebody else, but I don't believe in the centralization of things. I feel that when we centralize things, it's easy for someone to gain massive power mm -hmm. And so instead of just only having one, I would like to create my own and mine will be a little bit different. And what that is, is say an app where the people who listen to this podcast, listen to my podcast are on this lifestyle or mindset can come together and you can sign up and you can see, like, say I pulled my app up and I can see, we'll just say like blue dots all the other compassionate Vikings around me, or if I zoom out through the country, through the whole world, you would sign up and then we would be a part of this, this system where if you ever wanted anything or needed anything, instead of going to your grocery store or your bank or your politician or your mayor or whatever, you would go onto this app and you would find other people because you would trust them because they're in, they're in the same mindset as you. Let's say so, bro. I mean, it's it's so you can have people to rely on. Exactly. Because we're and it's easy to forget because we have built a pretty strong 
tribe of friends yes that we can lean on if we need to yeah a lot of people don't have fucking anyone i know and i hear it all the time bro because people will listen to the show and they're like man you talk about like that you've you've built a culture and your friendships and you have people that you can trust and he goes I, you know i have no one i yeah. hear that all the time and again my solution is always find a jiu-jitsu academy yeah you know what i mean yeah but this is another solution to this, that same problem this is and a multiple tiered solution or or, or uh, attack on different via different solutions it's only going to give is better it, uh, more options yeah more efficient so if i you know i want people of all walks of life i don't i don't care what you what your skill or profession is it's all about your mindset what are you on team freedom or are you on this fucking transhumanism woke bullshit I want doctors, I want lawyers, I want berry pickers, I want fucking women who, who anybody who is willing to learn new skills and network and connect. So let's say I need a, I want to dig a, a pond in my backyard. Instead of me going online or to Craigslist or Google, I would pull up my app, I would throw up a message. You know, we'll just say I'm, my name is the compassionate Viking compassionate Vikings looking for a fucking dirt worker and is, and these are the things I have to offer. So you're supporting each other inside of the community. Yes. So are you with like uh financial means or other or, 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 or other, okay. it, it could yeah, be yeah. whatever it is that you have to offer. Is it skills you have to offer? Is it currency you have to offer? Is it a product or an, an item you have to offer, you know, maybe this guy's like, yeah, I would love to fucking do it, but the teeth or my excavator pins broke. Okay. Bring your excavator over. I'll weld up your pin. Yeah. You dig me the hole and off we go. And bro, here's the thing. I think that approach, cause there are people that are like money, money fucking has taken away from how human beings used to interact. And that that is what it used to be is like, hey, this guy makes bread and I make fucking wagon wheels and together we all make it work, right? Yeah. But that doesn't work when you have 300 million people. No, it doesn't. Right? But if you built a network of people that was more intimate, you could probably get back to that to a certain extent. I think so. And, and, and blend it together where like, obviously like you could use financial means as well. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. yeah. I, any Anything that you can bring to the table for the barter. Yeah. Right. Because right now I see a lot of people hesitant with doing the things that they've always done. For instance, taking your kid to the doctor, sending your kid to school, going to the grocery store and buying fucking produce, mm -hmm. going to get eggs, um, you know, going to get fucking water out of the tap. Well, eggs have been deemed less healthy than Frosted Flakes, so. I know. That's why I killed all my chickens and bought boxes of Frosted Flakes. <laughs> Fuck, dude. So, <clears throat> what I see is, is we have offed our responsibility as human beings to, to other entities, okay? Yes. And now we're at a point in time where we're starting either not to trust these other entities or these other entities don't want to help us anymore. Mm -hmm. So, and these other entities have taken over commerce too. Yes. You know, like all these, you know, I talked about it with uh, Lindsey Graham on last week's episode and she's like, her theory is why they attacked small business on uh, during COVID is because small business still had this feel that you're talking about. Hey, this is so-and-so that repairs tractors up the street and he's always done me solid. Like, there, there's an understanding of how that person is likely going to be rooted in a, a freedom based mindset because you're a free thinker. If you start a small business yeah. and you, you're, you have a fucking skill set and you, and you can think outside of the box, right? Yeah. So let's go after those people. Absolutely. And Walmart and Amazon and home Depot, all these giant mega centers, their, their board of directors are all sucking each other's dicks with Gavin Newsom and Justin Trudeau, and they're all a bunch of faggot fucks together. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if you can get rid of all the regular guys and make everybody become worker bees for the fucking dick suckers, 
now you have a little bit of control over everybody. Yeah. And I think there's probably a lot of merit to that. I think so too. I think so. And, and so one of the things that I've been thinking of while trying to kind of come up with this game plan of how we're going to create a community, because I get these messages too of like, bro, we got to meet up or, or fuck, I need to find a tribe or I wish I was closer to you, all these different things. And it's like, there's no way that me and you are the only two fucking people on this team, you know? They're, yeah, they're, of course. They're all over the place. They're all over you the just place. Haven't connected with them. So, with that and the solutions, I started looking up. One of my big things right now is food. Why is food an issue? Well, because we rely on the grocery store, and then the grocery store relies on big big agriculture. And we can all look around and see what they've been doing to our farmland and our fucking crops, whether they're genetically modifying it or spraying insecticides or herbicides. They just fuck it all up. We don't make anything anymore. So let me go back. Our food is fucked because we we don't do it ourselves. We offed it to somebody else. Yeah. And it worked great for a while, but it's not working that great anymore. And bro, that's, I mean, that's why everybody's gluten intolerant now. Exactly. Well, like, have you looked into the glyphosate inside of fucking inside? Because everybody calls it gluten intolerance. No, you're you're allergic to fucking poison called glyphosate that they spray on your wheat. And it kills your gut microbiome. Well, 100%. Which is literally like the foundation of who you are. Yep. And, uh, you know, I just read a book on this and learned about it a little bit. And it was pretty fascinating. But you go to third world countries and you eat a fucking burrito. Yeah. No, no gluten intolerances. No, because they're not spraying poison on their food. <laughs> yeah. And, and the reason is, and I won't fucking go down a huge rabbit hole on this, but when Monsanto made uh, Roundup mm-hmm. and these different poisons as they started spraying on plants, they said they engineered it to not interfere with the human genome. Mm-hmm. So it's like... It might be poisonous to bugs and bullshit and and the the critters that are destroying your crops, but if you eat it, yeah, but not to you. It's not poisonous to you, right? So let's assume that's true. They 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 have this fucking magic capability to make it not interfere with human genetics. Your gut micro, microbiome is not made up of human genetics. Yep, it's made up of millions of cells, but you actually have more cells that aren't human in your body than human cells. And they're finding the glyphosate is fucking up those microscopic fucking bacteria because what it is, it's a colony of creatures that live inside you. Yeah. It's poisonous to them. It's poisonous as fuck to them. So there we go. Yeah. It, it's, it's crazy. So we have our food. That's a problem, which I came up with a solution. I've been learning regenerative farming and food forest. And to me, this is the next logical step. And if you want to learn about that, go listen to my, my podcast because I go over all the shit. And I will continue to go over it through all my episodes. For instance, a food forest is a replication of a real forest, but it is done by man, meaning we can look outside and we see the biggest trees. I plant the biggest trees that I want. My big trees are going to be oaks that produce acorns, walnut trees, black walnuts, pecans, um, a little bit smaller than that are hazelnuts. Those are more shrubs. But usually the big ass trees are nut trees. That is a substantial amount of fucking protein and nutrition. Uh, a walnut can last in your pocket for like two years. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Then underneath that, you go to the next, which for me is all my fruit trees. Pears, apples, you know, all that. And then you just work your way down all the way till like a cover crop, which is strawberries that I plant so that weeds don't grow. And then underneath that is going to be my potatoes, my radishes, my turnips. And they're all intertwined. All intertwined together. I don't till. I don't because tilling is fucking up the microbiome in the soil, which is the same as like our gut biome. When we use fertilizer and shit on our plants, we're not actually feeding the plants. You're feeding the soil and then the plants feed off of the soil and then we feed off of the plant. So what I did is I started observing how the forest works. And I see that no one tills the forest, no one fertilizes the forest, no one fucking prunes the forest, and no one mulches the forest. It just does it because it's created its own ecosystem. And as the ecosystem gets bigger and stronger, the mycorrhizal fungi in the ground start becoming more uh, prominent, 
the worms start coming, the birds start coming, and it starts to create its own thing. And this has been going on since the beginning of fucking time. I'm pretty sure the Garden <laughs> yeah. of Eden is like a food forest. Uh-huh. And they have places in other countries that have like, for instance, this one place in India, right on, it's on the border of India and China, has like a 6,000 year old food forest where the people who live there, 20 to, 20 to 30 minutes out of the day, every day, they will go and pick all their food. They don't buy their food. They just, it just grows. Once it's planted and thriving, do you have to continuously replant or do you just let the, the go to certain percentage of them go to seed and the plants just are reproducing? Let it, let on it go. Own? Let okay. it go. So with it is, um, because I mostly am planting perennials, meaning they're going to, you know, come back every year mm-hmm. up front is a lot of work, right? It takes a lot of work to rebuild a forest and then it takes a little bit of time for that forest to grow once it is established it's regenerative it takes care of itself and what will start happening is you'll start getting plants in other places because the birds are going to come and they're going to eat a raspberry and seed they and they're going to fly somewhere yeah. else shit that seed and there's a guy that i watch on youtube he planted um it was a field it was like a 10 acre field and it was just old cow pasture and one of the farmers got a hold of him and was like, hey, is there any way you could make a wind block? The wind fucking rips through here and none of my crops are growing. And and I would really like something there. And he says, why don't I make a food forest? This is back in 1995. So he did. And he planted all the things that I just said. And I just watched a YouTube video like two weeks ago of an update 25 years later. It's Unbelie- fucking thriving. Dude, it's fucking unbelievable. To the point where he's now having birds and butterflies and insects that have never been seen before or recorded. Uh Uh-huh. Like, he's like, I don't know. They just fucking start coming. And then all the birds and shit start planting all the seeds. So once a year, he goes out there and just digs up all the seedlings and then sells them at his nursery. He doesn't plant them. Mother Nature does all of it. And I'm like, dude... Well, I know what me and Folk are doing on our property. 100%. Just just clear. I mean, we have 30 acres. Clear a half an acre. A half of acre and is make it a, plenty of room. Plenty of room. And, it. It, and uh, I'm sure it's it's going to be dictated by your, just the natural, whatever fucking latitude you're on. Right. And how much precipitation we get. Like every different environment is probably going to have a, a most successful food forest. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, we're not going to be growing avocados and mangoes. <laughs> yeah. But- you know, if you're in Brazil, you're probably not going to be getting blueberries and fucking walnuts or apples. You Dude, know, it I just like, de- yeah, yeah. It just depends on where you're at. And uh, so, yeah, I think that the food forest is a big thing to the point where <sighs> part of me wants to start knocking on fucking neighbors doors. And anytime I see a bunch of lawn, hey, I can turn this into a food forest for you and just start my own fucking business, literally turning people's ecological deserts which is a lawn yeah it doesn't do anything for us you have to mow it every fucking week all summer long you have to spray weed killer on it it doesn't give you anything it takes all the fucking nitrogen i understand if you want to play soccer or have a little bit of lawn or some volleyball or a place where you can like go out in the yeah. lawn but we don't need like my neighbor he's got like two acres of lawn i've never seen him out there one time and i'm like dude If you create a food forest, everyone in this community, we would not have to go to the grocery store for produce anymore. Well, and bro, here's the thing too. It's like, because a lot of the different possible outcomes that we talk about on the show, and it's not fucking doomsday prepper shit. It's just humanity goes through, fuck, there's ebbs and flows of how successful society is and civilization and fucking the grid goes down. That's it. That's it. No, there are no more fucking transportations of food from the Midwest to fucking Lake Stevens, Washington. Yeah. Or fucking fuel shortages. Okay. Like, and, and bro, we were approaching that. Like the, the cost, the price of fuel was getting so high that it was like, dude, companies are not going to be able to sustain shipping anymore. No. Now it, what? Now, what? If now it, you it, don't eat, motherfucker. That's exactly it. That's exactly fucking it. And The other thing that I think that a lot of people don't know is when we're eating our food, food has energy within it, stored within it. Mm -hmm. Just like us, we have life force energy, orgone energy. uh, There's energy in the ether, mother nature, energy. It's just, 
it's a real thing and it's out there. And I believe that, well, not I believe, life force energy is sexual energy. And Mother Nature used sexual energy to create everything you see. We use our sexual energy to create our families. When we're not creating families by spreading our seed, we're using our sexual energy to create whatever it is that we're creating, whether it's Endless Endeavor, Compassionate Viking. It's, it's all the same energy. Food has it in it too. And let's just take an artichoke, okay? If I go buy an artichoke at Safeway, that artichoke was picked probably six months ago in the Mediterranean and it was sprayed with shit for it not to go rotten or to preserve it or ripen when it's supposed to. And by the time it gets to me, it has no life force energy left in it. There's still going to be nutrients in it, but we don't just need the nutrients. We are like, we are a battery. We are a receiver transmitter and voltage is actually what's what we're really needing. We sleep to re revoltage ourselves. We ground on the bare earth because of voltage, because of energy. And what I'm finding is that when we're shipping something 1600 miles, fuck, I don't even know. It's way farther than that. I have no idea. 15,000 miles away. Yeah. I mean, and some it takes six months for one, that supply chain is retarded. Oh, well, it's vulnerable, right? There's no life force energy left in it. And we're doing it to where we're, we're not actually picking and receiving the crops when they're wanting to be eaten and harvested. Whereas if you grow an apple tree and come August, you have fresh honey crisp apples and you pick it right off of the fucking tree and eat it. That thing is filled with life force energy. It will be different than going to buy one from the grocery store. Yeah. Not even just because of GMO or anything. Let's say it was the same exact one. Just the time. Just the time. Well, and bro, and it's like... Think of an animal. If we were driving down the road and we seen a car hit a fucking deer and we pulled over real quick and fucking skinned it, it's all good. We can eat it. Yep. However, every minute that passes by... It becomes, yeah, less edible. Less. Less life force to the point where pretty soon it will be a fucking carcass. Mm -hmm. And... I truly believe this is with our and food as well. it will diminish your life force. Absolutely. To yes. Yeah. Yes. So oh, it's, it's fucking interesting, bro. So that's the food thing. Then I started thinking about <clears throat> the children. We offed our responsibility of raising our own children. And I'm a, I'm a example of this too. I'm, I'm not exempt. My parents sent me off to school. My grandparents sent my parents off to school. Well, bro, I, the thing about this is, because my kids were in public school. Mm -hmm. I was a product of public school as well, right? Yeah. And uh, I think we just needed to fucking pull the veil back a little bit to really see what was going on. Mm -hmm. To be like, holy fuck, dude. This system isn't about educating. It's about indoctrinating. Yeah. And that is not, you know, five years ago, that would have been an extremist position. Mm -hmm. And, and I probably would have fucking been one of the people being like, bro, it's not that bad. Yeah. Because my kids were in public school. Uh, but it, they're playing the long game. Yes, they're playing and, the long and game. And they fucking started to introduce all these things to our children more and more and more. Like the the person that fucking introduced, that, that brought like the whole idea of sexual education to kids is a fucking pedophile. Of course. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, but enough people, and me included, it's like, well, you know, it's probably okay to to teach sixth graders how what sexual reproduction looks like. Because it's a very normal, nat no motherfucker, it is not the government's responsibility to teach us how to put a fucking dick in a vagina, period. And we start outsourcing just basic fucking human instinctual fucking like desires and, and way that we live life. We start outsourcing that to the government. Imagine that it kind of went to shit. It did. Because now part of sexual education is teaching third graders how to butt fuck each other. Yeah. Which is not part of sexual no, reproduction. It's not. It's just deviant fucking behavior, dude. Yep. And it's like, you can't say that. Like, that's how gay people have sex. I don't give a fuck, dude. Like, I don't care no. what people want to do in their bedroom. Yep. There's not a fucking valid argument to be made why we need to teach fucking babies about all this shit. No. Well, and the reason they're doing it 
it's just to keep them in a constant state of confusion and low vibration, dude. Yep. And that's it. Yeah. Like my wife went to Jordan Peterson on Sunday Mm -hmm. and, uh, bro, there was a bunch of Antifa people there protesting Jordan Peterson. (laughs) Yeah. Like what, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? And it's because, well, because he speaks out against the, the surgeries of children to that, that deem themselves transgender now fucking big media is fucking they're out for him dude and all of these fucking useful idiots all these antifa idiots they just do whatever they're told they're not free thinkers they're just fucking they're just mouthpieces and uh the reason i brought that up is he talked about like i mean he's a fucking doctor that was seeing patients and one of his patients was uh, a 14 year old girl that had a double mastectomy and had her boobs cut off because she thought she felt like a boy and you know what the doctors told her parents before this procedure? They told her, hey, you know, you could have a daughter that has her breasts removed and then feels like a boy. Or you could have a daughter that goes home and kills herself. What the fuck? So now now you're playing on, on emotions. F- emotions and fear to get kids to fucking mutilate themselves bro i would have fucking racked that dude right in the fucking hundred face, fucking dude. percent i would have fucking blast but here's it. the thing if you're in the doctor's office having a conversation about having your daughter's yeah, tits cut yeah. off you, you're not fucking on top of it to start with dude. this goes back to what we were talking about with the jujitsu thing right yeah two percent right if the now dude's on the fucking back choking you out it's too late you fucked up a, you long, fucked time up a long time ago yeah and like because i had that conversation with my daughter the second that she brought some of that bullshit into my house mm-hmm. as a 10 year old girl. I said, sit down. A, we're going to talk about it right now. And you're going to learn what the truth looks like. Yep. B, I'm pulling you from public school. See, see, change the trajectory right now, because if you let the fucking wrong trajectory fucking play out for months or more or fucking years, good luck trying to fucking reel that person back in. Yeah. You know, absolutely. Fuck, so, man. <clears throat> so, the public school. We have the food that we offed. I want. I come up with a solution. We have the school that that we off to raise our children. I'm homeschooling, but part of the compassionate Viking little app thing that I want to create is is a homeschool thing. Yes. So let's say. And dude, Mike Glover is doing that with Fieldcraft. They're offering a full. It's it hasn't launched yet, uh-huh. but full homeschool curriculum just get your kids out of the broken system yeah tim kennedy's doing it too see that's the and, way and that's the way bro we raise our own kids so that we know how they're growing up yeah my saying to the kids my job is to make sure that when you're 18 years old you are a independent savage smart intelligent unindoctrinated unindoctrinated young man who knows how to critically think you know about your fucking intentions you know about your intuition you know about your sixth sense all these things that is woo woo bullshit that is not woo woo bullshit and it's going to keep you dumbed down in a five sense reality stuck in the matrix if you don't fucking pay attention to this so with the homeschool thing i even thought about like let's say on tuesdays the kids come to my house and i teach them how to forge i teach them how to chop a tree down i teach them how to bushcraft fences we do uh in the summer our goal is we take you know 10 20 kids and we we do handcraft a fucking log cabin Mm -hmm. small but even with vanessa the the teaching kids how to preserve food or parents how to preserve food teaching logan and reagan what it's like to plant their own food and then taking care of it for three months and then actually bearing the fruits off of it these are things that i think as we progress on this fucking timeline more and more families are going to start to want want this and if you Bro, more and more families are going to need yes this. and if you know that the people that are within this compassionate viking are trustworthy people you're going to be more apt to be like hey let's send them to the stanaways Rather than let's send them to fucking whatever elementary school that we're going to. I don't know the teachers there and I don't know what their their morality is rooted in. Whereas over here, I mean, you guys can listen to me. I fucking talk every single week on the internet. Yeah. yeah. After, you know, 20 fucking hours of listening to someone talk. You get an idea who you the get fuck a fucking, they are. Exactly. No, and bro, that's a real thing. You get to know people 
because we're putting out our fucking message and our fucking truths and uh through this fucking medium is real it is you know it's, it's exactly like i'm going out to uh i'm going out to andy stumps next weekend for his grand opening of his black rifle and uh one of the one of my jiu-jitsu students jay actually the, the new guy he's mm-hmm. like hey i'm going out there too man that's gonna, it's gonna be cool and he goes yeah i feel like i know andy yeah, i've listened to every single one of his episodes i said you do know him yeah you do you do you know yeah and it's cool man it is it is so <clears throat> those two things and then the other thing is like our supply chain, our manufacturing. We offed all of our creative abilities to China mm-hmm. and to Taiwan. And that worked good for a while. It was cheap as fuck. We could support child labor. And <laughs> as long as it's not, you know, in my line of sight, I'm willing to pay $120 for a pair of Nikes that. Uh, probably an eight-year-old little girl works 20 hours a day, sleeps on a dirt floor, and gets a bowl of rice. Yeah, bro. Right? Yep. Well, now, now you can't even do that because we're at the mercy of China. And if well, China, bro, and again, China's playing the long game. That's it. They took, they're, they're taking us over without even fucking firing a shot. This is a new kind of war. They're buying up all the farmland. Yep. They're fucking, they're in control of the economy. Like, if we don't manufacture anything, okay yeah and and if they say you know what fuck you guys fuck you guys then guess what no one knows how to do anything other than push ones and zeros on a fucking keyboard these days and that doesn't feed your family that doesn't feed your family and it doesn't it doesn't create a strong uh community and when everyone's vulnerable and doesn't know how to fucking do anything create anything build anything then we're just fucking sitting ducks and so my my solution with that is going back to this fucking app. We start building shit again. And it is going to be a little bit more expensive at first because we're going to have to get things started. But in the long run, it will actually be much cheaper. Because how, your, your shoes were made across the street and exactly. on the other side of the world. How could something be shipped over to China, be built, then shipped all the way back to us, and still be cheaper than me making it here. Yeah. Well, that's because of the way it's designed. And you'll hear a lot in recent terms from the powers that be the word sustainable. They love that word. And it's a catchy word. I get it. It sounds fucking good. And it seems like we're on, we're on to something here. Sustainability. Sure. However, sustainability only works When what you're sustaining is legit Mm -hmm. and what we're sustaining is not legit. Our infrastructure sucks. Our politicians suck. Our rules and laws suck. Our money fucking sucks. It's all going down the hill. But then now they're coming up with this term of sustainability. Uh Uh-uh. We don't want to sustain bullshit. We want to bullshit in itself is not sustainable. Exactly. And I say it on the show all the time. The trajectory of the country and this isn't to scare people. It's just not sustainable. Mm-hmm. Just, let's just let's just look at math. Math is something that is not liberal or conservative. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, it's math is bipartisan. Well, you would think it was. Remember last year they're like they're saying, well, two plus two could be five. Actually, it, it could be. And if it's not, but it's if, not, motherfucker. Because <laughs> the thing is, is if it's four, then that's racist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Again, <laughs> right? But. Uh, I mean, fuck, man. That's think that's where we're at, dude. Yeah, you know. But that's why, like, I keep going back to two things. Thank God this is all happening. Yeah. Thank God it's all happening. When I learned about this, when I was fucking in my early twenties, and I tried to go around and tell people, it was so heartbreaking. Honestly, it well, was, bro, and, and now it's front and center. It it's is. just like I was saying. Like it's it's no longer sustainable. Like, look how fucking large our deficit is. And yesterday, our president said, I'm going to send another half a billion to Ukraine. And he flew over there and fucking gave him a big hug and they were sniffing each other. Do you see those pictures? Dude. Like, bro, it, it's not sustainable. No. And I don't and, and you know what's cool is like as we're talking about all this, because there's been plenty of episodes where I'm fired the fuck up on the bullshit. Mm-hmm. And again, my phrase I say all the time is like stay informed, but not consumed. Yep. Right. Because there's a balance. 
you have to understand the battle space in which you're occupying. But the balance is starting to shift where instead of being upset about all these motherfuckers, because bro, it's going to implode at some point. Of course. That's what's going to happen. Yep. All right. Now that you know, now that we got that out of the way. Yeah. Now we're in phase two. Yeah. How do we prepare for phase two? What are two? we going to do about what it? What are we going to do? And it sounds like your fucking message is how to fucking eat and keep your family safe. Yep. And it you know what I'm saying? Eat, keep your family safe, and raise them with as much fucking knowledge as they possibly can so that they're not 34 years old trying to relearn everything that they were taught. Yeah. If I, I, I keep going back to if we didn't have to, let me retract. Humans are special in this, in this ability. We were given, we were given a consciousness. We have free will. And therefore that means that we are separated from all other animals and insects on this planet. All other animals and insects on this planet, they have one job and that is to survive. Okay. Every single day of their life, they are fucking fighting or feasting which I love all three of those things too. <laughs> I, I was just going to say, hold on a second. Th those are my <laughs> still favorite things in the whole world, but we get to add something on. And that means that we can use our brain. We were given the ability to have an imagination and with imagination comes creativity. And if we can create by using our imagination, we will create new inventions for the world. That is only going to happen when we are not spending 40 to 70 hours a week at somebody else's business, making them rich. Yeah. Okay. Well, bro, it goes back to, you know, the, the fucking uh, vision board that we talked about and in the book, the secret. And one of the things the author said, which is, is, is non -dis you can't argue this people that want to say manifestation is real or it's not real. Okay. But this is a point you can't argue. She goes at one point there wasn't airplanes. Mm -hmm. Then the Wright brothers said, I bet we could build something that flies. Now there's airplanes. Yep. Okay. So tell me how that process worked. It's imagination. It's imagination. And for every single fucking thing, this fucking roadcaster that we're recording, some man or woman at some point was just sitting there thinking, how could I deliver conversations across the entire planet? Hmm. Boom. Now this Boom. thing exists. Yeah, dude. So... My point in that is that if we can make it to where, see right now, everyone's life is so fucking chaotic. They're filled with cortisol. They're stressed. They don't make enough money. They can't pay their fucking bills on time. They're worried about their water and lights getting shut off. You keep them in that state of and, fear. And, you, and, and that's all it is day after day. And they've created us to be no different than a bee or a bear where all day, every day we just survive. But humans were meant to thrive on this planet. And the way that we thrive is we take the things that all other animals have to do to survive and we make it regenerative, meaning it just works for itself. So that, for instance, back to this little fucking city in India, they're not having to make money to pay bills to go to the store to get produce. They just walk through the food forest 20 to 30 minutes a day. And now they have the rest of the time to go enjoy their fucking apple in the in the sun and ponder thoughts and and partake in the kama sutra <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah. partake in the kama sutra yeah and and to me it's like people aren't inventing things really anymore your invention is just an upgrade of something you already had an iphone 15 is not a fucking new invention compared to an iphone 5 yeah it's the same thing it's just upgraded why is our fucking airplanes the same model airplane that we had in the 1970s. Yeah. But somehow our cars have gone better. Bro, I think about this a lot. And this is stoner talk. But like, if you look at the history of planet Earth, it's pretty clear that there's been some massive cataclysmic events that have wiped out humanity for the most part. Yeah. You know, and you, you look at like Gobekli Tekbi and those like ancient cities or even like the Great Pyramids. And people are like, it would take uh, 2000 fucking slaves to be able to fucking pull one of those stones and they're within uh, one millimeter of square, all the shit, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, hey, dum dum. It's because it wasn't 2,000 slaves. Mm -hmm. It was a technology that we don't understand. Yeah. And they probably used fucking telekinesis or something to move shit around. Yeah. Oh, you're fucking crazy. Am I? Like, why, why do we think, like, if you pushed fucking reset today 
on humanity and you came back 25,000 years later, you think we're going to be on the exact same path? You think the same people are going to come up with the same ideas? You think the engine's going to be ran on fucking oil? Like there's the potential for us to go down these completely different rabbit holes. And I think that's probably what happened. Yeah. I, I, I think so because I could say something like, Hey, what if I told you that you can levitate things with sound? Exactly. Yeah. Most people are going to be like, fuck that, bro. That guy's out of his mind. And then I would show you that if you look up somatics, people have done this for long periods of time that through frequency and sound, you can make things levitate. Well, I'm not, not I'm not saying this is how they did it, but what if they had big, big ass speakers and had a sound and could levitate a stone. Yeah. I don't know if that's true or not, but I know that you can levitate things. Look it up. Well, if you've never, that's the other thing is people don't know what they don't know, right? If you've never heard of something, then it doesn't exist. <laughs> Bro, I say that all the time with jujitsu. Yeah. You because don't. like the first time someone puts their hands on you, which we talk about on this podcast all the time, you didn't know what you didn't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now that's out there. Think about that. Now that's out there for all kinds of shit. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess the, the, the moral of the story here is with the compassionate Viking. I want to, I want to really help. That's my main goal is help. I want to connect again. People don't have fucking cool kick-ass friends. People don't trust anybody anymore. And when this thing implodes, let's say they switch to CBDC central banking, digital currency. If they switch to that, I'm exiled from society because digital IDs and social credit scores with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not deemed fit for society. They hate me. So how do you eat? So how do I eat? How do I do any of these things? If I can't use a U.S. dollar anymore, what am I going to do? Well, I think for a lot of people, I'm not going to be the only one. There's going to be a lot of people who are like, I'm opting out. I'm not being a part of that. So in a time. Well, bro, we need, and, and that's why these conversations are important because <clears throat> the time to say, I'm going to be the person to opt out. Bro, it's the same with me as a cop saying, you know what? I'm not fucking doing this. Mm -hmm. It's the same with all of us on the vaccine. You know what? I'm not fucking doing this. You have to know that I'm going to be one of the guys that opts out because fuck you. That's yep. why Yep. you have to have the understanding and you have to have that, that uh, really that commitment to yourself right now. And, and you know, like, I'm nowhere near where I want to be. Mm -hmm. If it's, if, if, if opt out time happens next month, man, I'm fucking struggling. Right. But, yeah. but, but this is why I tell my family, I might be struggling, but I got 10,000 rounds of five, five, six. We have 30 acres on a river. Like we are a lot farther along than most people. Yep. And we'll figure out a way to be okay. That's it. But the other side of that coin is if we know opting out is probably going to occur in our lifetime. It's not coming from a place of fear or like fixating on these fucking what ifs. It's just simply, how about we take some steps? So when we do have to opt out or even if, if yeah. we have to opt out, we'll be okay. And the reason I like to say if is because, and we, we talk about it all the time. We don't know the fucking future. Nope. What if some super fucking stud gets elected into office that rallies all these people and we do change the trajectory? Yeah. And that's a possibility too. Yeah. But the, the thing that people don't realize, and, uh, you know, I talked about this with Glover. It's like, man, the more prepared you are, the more at peace you are. That's it. That's, that's it. exactly it. That, and that's so it's like, this isn't about feeling fearful. It's like, dude, this is my ace in the hole. I'm going to dominate life in this weird society where I make money on Instagram and talking into this microphone. And I'm going to have 300 jujitsu students. Like if that's the life, cool. Yeah. But if it comes time to opt out, all right, I'm ready. And yeah. as long as you have that, okay, I'm ready in the back of your mind, bro, it's only going to make all the other shit that we do that much easier. Yes. And that's why I'm feeling now uh, a lot better about all of this going on. For the first two years, I was so fucking angry. So angry about all this. And bro, like that anger. It ate me alive. It eats you alive because here's the thing, man. The human being can't express two emotions simultaneously. So by being angry, not only are you being angry, but you're ensuring that you're not happy. Yes. Yes. You know that, what I'm saying? That's it. And so like, 
again, it goes to all the stuff we talk about all the time. Your cortisol is fucking just pumping through your veins. You're not being imaginative. You're not thinking about the good in life. You're not thinking about all the things that serve you. You're caught up in the hamster wheel of fucking hate and anger. And I'm full of fucking hate and anger sometimes. And I mean, and the thing is like, there's people that have earned that hate and anger, but the fucking reality of it is nothing I say or do is ever going to get across Justin Trudeau's desk. No, he doesn't know who the fuck I am. I am nothing to him. Mm -hmm. Right. And fucking a man, Andy Frisella 101, the ultimate rebellion is personal excellence. Yes. You know? Yep. Andy. And every time I say that, I fucking say, I wish I coined that phrase, but Andy got it first. Yeah, and it's a good phrase. It's a, it's and a, it's the truth. It is. It is. And because now I'm at a place of not anger and hate, and I think my ayahuasca ceremonies really helped me with that. I'm at a place of solution, and I feel like now I can be free. And by doing all of this on my own, it has made me feel like so fulfilled to be as independent as I'm becoming. I guess I didn't realize how, how good it feels to, to be able to take care of yourself. Yeah. So with what's coming up, I see two things. If it fucking goes down and you know, a shit hits the fan scenario and say, you know, food and money is not a thing anymore. What's going to be the most important to me? The thing that's going to be most important to me is love, honor, trust, and respect. In a time where, well, you've been to the fucking Middle East in the middle of war. How valuable is respect, honor, love, and trust? Yeah, yeah. no, it's everything. It's everything. And, and that's why a lot of men come home from military deployments and they miss it. It's be like, fuck, I was getting blown up every day. But I had those things within my team. And right? I want, yeah, and, and I, I want to build that. And it's like, so here's what's the most important, right? Yeah. And you say love, honor, trust, and respect. Super important, right? But I think we need to look at it from uh, a, a couple different vantage points. That is the most important within your circle. Yes. Right? Yes. This is my team. Outside of that circle, the most important thing in, in any type of volatile, volatile environment is security, security. That's it, man. Is so that trust? That's what I'm saying. Those two things are kind of those, those things are congruent. You have the right circle of people that you do have love and trust and respect for. Now we can provide security for each other. Yeah. And that's bro fucking it's a, it's the walking dead, right? You yeah. know what I mean? It's like these little fucking bands of people that can trust and respect each other. Now we can provide security for each other and that's not just physical security it's emotional security yeah you know yeah do we got each other's backs that in itself like you you go you watch naked and afraid and when it's a a, a partnership where they're slaying together and then they cut themselves with a knife and they get medically evac that first night that person's alone miserable yep you know what i mean yeah we need that physical and emotional security and when fucking human beings build a tribe of people like we have bro. we know we'll have that yes we yes. know we'll have that so now i can look out i feel confident in our group of friends mm -hmm. i can look out and what i've seen over the last two years now i'm at a place of observation i've looked back and i realized okay let's not forget about the the dudes wearing harley fucking vests who had beards bigger than mine standing on a fucking dot in the grocery store with a mask on their face let's not forget about the people who would only walk down a certain fucking aisle or a certain way down the aisle because of the arrows on the ground or the people who were sanitizing their fucking grocery bags and leaving them outside before they bring them in the house you have those people okay i don't trust those people because yeah. they don't critically think then you have the people who says that they they say that they don't like what's going on but they fucking comply with it so they don't like to wear the mask but they wear it because they don't want to deal with the confrontation because they have no honor they have no honor but the ones that really get me were the ones who said that they were going to fucking stand on their own two feet and draw a hard line and when it came down to push or shove they fucking cucked it's because they have no courage exactly so now as I observe back and see the behavior of the people that live amongst me, 
on the next step, whether it's good or bad, I want to surround myself with people who I know will fucking go out on their shield. Fuck, man. I I hit the vape pen, so I got some fucking high thoughts going through, right? But if you look at, like, you remember Jocko's video, Good? Yes. You ever seen that? Yes, I've sent that to so many people. All this fucked up shit happens, good. Maybe COVID, good. Because all the things that you just saw where you were able to identify people that lack honor, people that lack courage. When everything's fucking perfect, those people are hard to identify. They ain't fucking hard to identify anymore. Nope. You know? (laughs) So you know what? Good. Good is exactly it. It's exactly it. (coughs) Damn, that was a fat hit. (laughs) Um, We got jujitsu. You're you're not coming to Nogi, huh? No, not tonight. Um, One of the things, too, is... As we find out who has the honor and who has the courage and who has all the things, those are the people who are going to be a part of this community that I'm trying to fucking the Viking community. And I don't care if you're a Muslim or a Buddha or a Christian. Uh, That doesn't matter to me because Viking isn't actually like a religion. A Viking is, is a lifestyle and it means to be in harmony with nature. So I'm at the point now where we can create this thing. We can all observe for the people who don't. I I did come across someone who wants to find a tribe who doesn't have a jujitsu gym in a reasonable amount, you know, a reasonable. Yeah. Distance from their house. Let's be honest too. I think jujitsu is the key to a lot of things, but it's not available to fucking everybody. It's not. And not just because of geographically, like, Maybe they got fucking scoliosis or whatever it is, right? Like jujitsu is not available to everybody. And then the other side of that too, as jujitsu gets bigger, man, there's some, there's some gyms popping up with broken culture Yep, because your culture is your foundation. We have the best. We, our culture is as good as it can get. In my opinion, I'm, I'm slightly biased. I never been anywhere else. So it's (laughs) fucking amazing. You know what I'm saying? But like, man, this is an this everything you're talking about is an answer to broken culture. Yep. You know? I, I and we're gonna start. The goal is this. I'm 34, you're 42, and we've came to this place where no one's coming to save us. Personal excellence is the fucking only way. And what I would like to do is get all the other people like us together and then start bringing it upon the kids because when the kids learn what we are learning right now and they learn as we learn, then they learn everything we know when they're fucking 18, 20 years old and then they continue and they have kids and those kids are better off than our fucking kids, which is exactly how it's supposed to be. Exactly. And so all of the information that I'm learning needs to be passed on so that other people don't have to spend their time learning what I already learned. Right. Yeah. They, if, if it took me 10 years to learn all the shit that I know and I pass it off to you on a two hour podcast every week and you listen to and from work, you didn't have to take any of your time of pursuing your dreams and goals away to learn this shit. Yeah. That is the way, you know, you can learn a lot by piggybacking on the fucking tailcoats of the greats and the legends. A hundred percent. You can dude. Yes. Like, all of these fucking like massive technological advances were possible because of the steps that men and women took the generation before that. Yeah. And that's just how it works. If you made stairs, someone made the wheel. Yeah. You you know? Yeah. Yeah. And if you made stairs, you wanted to make stairs and it was a hundred fucking stories. Are you going to restart down on stair one every time? you know, a a new person comes or are you going to just build a step after the guy before you? Yeah. Because rebuilding the hundred stair steps is stupid and you might not get it done in your lifetime. And then your kid has to do it and they might not get it done in their lifetime. Bro. And they're like, there was cathedrals and shit that took 500 years to make. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was fucking 10 generations of people to build this. Yeah. My great, 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 great grandfather. He built that gargoyle. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I'm right dude. here. <laughs> it's so, fucking nuts, dude. It is. It is. Well, you got anything else? 
Well, fuck, we're we're only at one forty nine. Let's go. Then. I don't have to open the jujitsu academy for fifty five more minutes. Oh, I kept thinking five o'clock. No, no, no. I don't teach kids tonight. Craig has kids. Oh, class. okay. I'm like fuck, sitting here thinking you're gonna be late, dude. Oh, fuck no. Oh, dude, bro. we can fucking let's talk. Keep, yeah, let's yeah, keep yeah, rapping, yeah. dude. Hey, absolutely. I was actually thinking as we're doing this, like we got to do these more often. I love how when you and I just sit down and think about the universe, yeah. I don't give a fuck if this show gets one download. This has been enlightening for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what's a power. That's when podcasting comes alive. We're here discussing shit that, yeah, we're sharing with all these fucking people that like our products and our shows. And it's cool. And I love that. But you know, the conversations fucking authentic when I'm feeling enriched in the moment. Yeah. And fucking like, I am going to take away like a bonding experience with you. And bro, so many people don't have friends that they can just sit down with like this. Cause bro, me and you have conversations like this three days a week. Yeah. Maybe not for two hours, but for 15 minutes after practice and, and, and you, before and, and during, yeah. fucking, like we're talking all the time and bro. And, and you look around and there's 20 other little fucking pairs of people sharing fucking shit on the mats after yeah, practice too yeah dude they're all every single person that you talk to at the jujitsu gym will tell you like thank god for this place i, know. I mean even i just smoked a joint with toby last night after yeah. class yep. and we we're bullshitting and he's like dude jujitsu like i found my people like you and toby was great. late to the game yeah and he still feels that which is fucking rad dude, dude. it's awesome and i said the same thing i go before this I was literally smoking weed and, and drinking beers, playing video games on a couch, making 600 bucks a week while Vanessa worked 50 hours a week and took care of the family. Yeah. Literally. I mean, it's going on that fucking downward trajectory. Yeah. You know, and I, I'm, she used to tell me, she used to tell me, babe, you have enough skills and you're talented enough and your work ethic is p fucking way good enough to where you should be making a good as amount of money. And you know what I'd tell her? This is it. This is as much as I'll ever going to make. $19.50 and and that's it. And it used bro. to drive her like. Bro, I've thought about all this a lot lately. A lot. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, the reason that human beings say what you just said. It's like, no, this is, this is what I am. It's because you undervalue yourself. Yeah. And it's when you stand and you look in the mirror, you're not proud of the person that you are. In fact, you're the opposite. You're kind of let down mm -hmm. by the person that you are. And bro, I've looked in the mirror and been let down by that man a lot. Yeah. And for a long time, even when I was doing things that the rest of the world would look at and be like, bro, he's a fucking army ranger. Oh, dude, he just got a black belt. I would still look in the mirror at times and come up with reasons to say like, I'm not fucking proud of you. Right. And this is my theory, dude. Everything that w is going wrong in society. Why are they celebrating obesity? Why, why would they possibly be self? No, no, no. It's, it's to make this person feel better about themselves. No, it's not. Because when that person looks at themselves in the mirror, they're not proud of the person that they are. Yeah. So what you do by celebrating mediocrity is you, f you put all of the people in our society in a place where it is now acceptable to be ashamed of yourself. And it's a rarity to be proud of yourself. And bro, society can't function with a bunch of people that are ashamed of who they are No, because they, like, you, Oh, a 400 pound fitness model. How, what, what kind of strength does that woman have to be able to fucking be on that magazine cover? All the shit that they celebrate about it. It's all a fucking lie. Fuck yeah. It because is. when that girl goes home and she changes and she's crawling in her bed and she looks herself in the mirror and she sees 400 pounds. It doesn't matter who celebrated it on the outside. It doesn't matter what the magazine articles say or what the fucking CNN headlines are. She looks at herself and she fucking is sad. Yeah, she is. She is sad. And that's, that's the true atrocities in society. That's you want to talk about fucking real sadness. We're fucking celebrating mediocrity to make people ashamed of themselves, dude. And we're doing the same things with like, all of it, dude. We celebrate mediocrity because here's the thing, bro. You can never become the strongest version of yourself if the person you look at in the mirror, you're ashamed of. You have to look at the person in the mirror 
and say, fuck yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. And, and it's just like I put on this vision board, a picture of me when I was probably the most shredded I've ever been. Right. When I look at myself in the mirror now, even if I'm not the absolute best version of myself, you can still look at yourself and say, hey, you got some work to do, but you're a motherfucker. That's where you want to be in life. Yes. You want to be able to be honest with yourself and say, you know what? I got some work to do here or there, but it doesn't make me a lazy piece of shit. It doesn't make me worthless. It doesn't make me a fat, useless fucking slob. It's just, I got some work to do here. Let's yeah. identify the work while simultaneously saying, and you know what? You're still a motherfucker. That's and, what we need to be doing. Yes. And you, and you can't compare yourself to others. Here's the thing. It's impossible not to. Okay. It's impossible not to actually compare yourself, but just like in jujitsu, if you compare yourself to others, more than likely you're going to be let down every time you leave this fucking place. Well, because, because here's the deal. We all got to start somewhere and we all have fucking demons. Okay. I look, I look fit. I look physically fit. And a lot of people are like, what the fuck? You don't go to the gym. Lucky, right? Lucky to be Lucky you. you. You have good genes or whatever it is. And sure, maybe maybe I do have good genes. However, I have other flaws. I'm not a perfect human being and there is no fucking perfect human being. So whatever you see what you would call perfect on me or that means that I have shadow work in other places that you don't see. Yeah. Maybe you don't have fucking trauma and anger and addiction problems maybe that's you don't even understand that yeah well i do i've been that fucking fighting that shit since my dad killed himself yeah so you you can't just compare right everyone I think, has I think their the, own fucking thing i think the comparison game like most things in life is a double-edged sword yes because i do like to look at other men and women that are doing fucking phenomenal things as aspiration as aspiration yes. right but i think those things kind of come in the same package because it's like when when marcus bushesha just beats the fuck out of me yeah and i literally feel like i've not trained one hour of jujitsu in my whole fucking life mm -hmm. then i have to be like okay i don't want to compare myself in a way that makes me feel like shit but it does it does make sense to say okay so what does this guy have that I don't absolutely? And how do I get better? Yes. And so I think comparison can come from a place of peace or I think it can come from a place of like turmoil. Okay. Right. I'll take that. So if you can't discern between the two, yeah, if you can't make a fucking conscious effort for it to be a positive comparison, then don't fucking compare and walk your own fucking journey on your own path. Because really this comes back to intentions and what you're saying about the, the women feeling ashamed of themselves while being glorified for it. Do you remember my conversation with you on my, about my first ayahuasca ceremony about filling your cup? Mm -hmm. It's exactly that. Yeah. All of this stuff, even, even what I'm saying back to Vanessa saying, this is all, uh, this is as best as it gets is because I, we all have this cup. So for those who have not listened to my first ayahuasca ceremony on this podcast, well, go back and listen to it. But this is something that came to me or that I heard or I don't even remember, but we all have a cup within us. Okay. And this is a metaphor, obviously. And the goal of life is to fill the cup up. Whenever the cup is full is when we feel the best and life is the most glorified. Typically what we are taught is that we fill the cup up from outside via relationships, money, and out of the objects, hobbies, passions. And those are all great. All of those things are good, but they don't fill your cup up. They do. They do. Okay. They do fill your cup up, but they don't stay full because <laughs> your cup has a hole in the bottom of it. And so you can fill the cup up in certain things like a, like a relationship or a marriage or kids that fills your fucking cup up quite a bit. If to me, it did at least. However, there's still a hole. It will drain out and certain things have, you know, more viscosity than others. Certain things have, you know, all these different things about how long your shit stays in your cup. But at the end of the day, there's a hole in the bottom of it and it all drains out. And what I see in society is people just reaching for fucking straws, anything they can. Now it's a lot of drugs, drugs, and social media, social likes, me right? Just constant, constant filling it up. 
And through my ceremony, I had learned that essentially the way you fill it up is like a water fountain. You have to fill it up from the bottom. And how do you do that? You know, how, what, what makes it different to fill it up from the top than the bottom? Self-belief, self-esteem, believing in yourself, confidence. So you're literally building the foundation. Yes. And then you can start building it up. If you don't believe in yourself, no one will ever believe in you. That's number one. 100%, bro. Okay. That's that lesson right there. If, if fucking people listen to this podcast, <laughs> if you can't take anything else away, take that away. Yes. Because my life did a 180 after I started believing in myself. Yes. And bro, you can, you can put on the dog and pony show however you fucking want to, yeah. but it's an energy thing. One, once people know, man, you are fucking who you were, who you are claiming to be. Yes. They feel it. They feel it. And everything becomes congruent. That's when it starts is when you believe in yourself. Well, in order for you be to believe in yourself, you're going to have to do things that would make you believe in yourself just like someone else would have to do things to make you believe in them. Yeah. Okay. So if we're, we're wanting to feel better about ourselves, then we cannot just do nothing. This goes back to the secret and it goes back to intentions. Once your self-belief becomes a thing, it's all about your intentions. You're setting it out to believe in yourself. Whereas as you go on further, when you set your intentions to wanting to be fit, wanting to fucking do all these things, then that's where our energy is going to flow. Bro, I wrote this down a couple nights ago Okay, because it's like, it was just something like I have fucking stoner thoughts and I have to write it down. Yeah. Right. And I wrote down to build credibility as a man. You must conquer something arduous. Yes. And not until this moment, I was thinking outwardly. If I want the respect of my peers and the other human beings I share society with, I have to have proven to them I'm capable of doing something hard. Mm -hmm. That's why so many cultures literally have like a rite of passage challenge for the young men to go through, right? Yep. But to build credibility as a man, you must conquer something arduous. It also applies to your self credibility. That's it. You have to show yourself to, to make yourself believe in yourself Yeah. because you can fake it till you make it. But if you don't ever make it, then you just faked it the whole time. You typically you, you start can, out. You can fake it to everybody else. That's it. But you can never fake it to the fucking man in the mirror. Dude. Nope. Nope. And there's certain, and that's things. why that person fucking often hates the person. Yes. It's in the mirror because they're not, they don't believe in them. And bro, like, fuck, it's like I said, I've been that person. So have I. So guess what? That's part of everybody's path. Yeah. Don't think because you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you hate what you see that you're a loser or that you should commit suicide. No. Because when I hated that person, I thought those things. And guess what? It's a lie. It is a lie. We are all It's a special. low vibration lie. Yep. And we are all capable of greatness. Every single one of us is a special, unique soul that was given specifically for you. That is what you are. And you were given talents and attributes that no one else has. And for us to be dumbed down, fat, not capable, stupid, just like wasting our life away. For instance, uh, you know, just people constantly watching sports or people constantly watching porn all these different things which do whatever you want but if you're spending your time either watching i do it too so i'm not exempt i watch ufc i like i get yeah. it yeah but if this is like your whole like your life revolves around this you're wasting there's, your there's life houses away. in lake stevens that are painted the seahawks colors that's Shit like that yes. yeah <clears throat> like so be you motherfucker and you're spending your time devoting your intentions, your energy towards somebody else's. Yeah. We have to start. You're building someone else's it, it empire to, or you're building yours. That's it. It goes back to Andy Frisella's thing. It's personal excellence. So if we just focus on building our own self-confidence, don't worry about anyone else. Focus on what you can do with your own creativity and your own mindset to build your own self-confidence, your cup will start to fill up and it starts to feel good. Even if let, let's say you're 400 pounds right now and next week you're 395. That's it. Yeah. Even 399. 
It's, it's the it's, right trajectory. It's the right directory, and you will feel better. And it's like a snowball. It's hard to like. It's hard to get it to go, but once it's going, it fucking. It's a snowball effect. It gets bigger and bigger so, until you can start. Other people start believing in you, bro. I'll tell you, one of the biggest steps for me to arrive at that place was to to make a conscious effort to try and be less critical of others. Yes, because being critical of others in a roundabout way is is almost accepting negativity instead of and. and, and Focusing on negativity changes the trajectory downward. It just does. Is that an intention? That's what I'm saying. It's all intention. And it's our fucking thoughts. And so like, and I'll tell the story um, that happened this week. I had a guy write me. It's like, you know, you talk about like, no one's coming to save you and entrepreneurship. You're just a fucking uh, uh, GoFundMe baby. That's why you succeeded. It's because you got to go fund me. And you were able to fucking, you know, you could have spent the money on, and they start telling me like what I could, should have spent the money on, as opposed to you, you built a business with it. You built your own business with it. You know, as a police, he said something like as a police officer, you could have donated it back to policing, but you built a business with it. And I started thinking like, and he's like, and that's, you know, that he started saying like what the money was for. And I was just thinking, and I was fascinated because I was like, I know this. I seen this comment and wrote him something and deleted it. Oh, did you on your okay, comment? So that, it was that guy. I had back and forth with that guy a little bit. Okay. Right? And I then, was mad at him. No, no. And then I banned him because I was like, dude, I don't need to, I, I'm an open book. Yep. The people that listen to the show no, know, know the GoFundMe story. It got started for legal funds and, and it blew the fuck up. And I got 10 times what I needed for the lawyers. That's not your, that wasn't you. No, that's what I'm saying. So, so the people that said, Hey, this fucking cop got fired for standing up for what's right. And I'm going to kick him five or $10. Cause that's what most people did. Yep. It just happened a hundred thousand times. Yeah. All right. If those people saw my message and saw my life and saw me get fired and said, yeah, like I want to support this guy. Oh, I, I didn't go buy a Ferrari. You know what I mean? I invested yeah. in myself, dude. You've enriched your community. And it's like, how can you shit on that? Or, or how can you, let's, let's just say you don't agree with me. Like, let's say like, oh, you're, I, I, everything he's doing stupid, right? Why would you shit on that? The last thing I'm going to do is go look up GoFundMes that have happened because there's big GoFundMes that happen every fucking day, right? Yeah. Like that lady that tripped, uh, delivering pizzas. Did you see that one? Uh-uh. She tripped and she was like 70 Okay, as a pizza delivery woman. And she couldn't get up because she was old and unhealthy and it was sad. It's yeah. like, fuck, this is an old woman yep. that is working because she clearly has to. And someone started to go fund me and it blew the fuck up. And that's cool. Yeah, good. Right? The last thing I'm going to do, and there's GoFundMes that have got started for people that I think are pieces of shits. Yeah. Right? Like some fucking Antifa Black Lives Matter fucking protester that whatever and their GoFundMe blows up. The last thing I give a fuck about is how they spent it. And then even even more so is how they spent it two years after the fact. You look at BLM. They bought mansions and shit, right? Yeah. I don't, dude, I'm over that shit. I'm moving forward, dude. Oh, well. You can tell where his intentions are at. Clearly, he's not doing, he's not filling his cup up. Well, and when you tell someone, you could have done this, you could have done that, the only thing you're screaming is, I could have done this, I could have done that, and I didn't. There's a saying that says, no one will ever do or say anything that isn't a direct reflection of themselves. Yeah, bro. And that's the fucking truth. Yeah. And my great grandma. I love that you saw that fucking guy, dude. Yeah, dude, I was, so, I fucking wrote out this thing, like, look, bro. You have no idea. Like I wrote, yeah. I wrote this thing and then I deleted it because you can't. And you then can't. I did it again and I deleted it. And then I was like, nope, my intention and energy is going towards something that is not manifesting. Like if it's not serving me in my life, then it can't be a part of it. And this guy weaseled his fucking way and not even on my post. Well, bro. And, and, and I violated my own rule in responding to negativity mm-hmm. because his first comment was, uh, uh, you use the whole fucking go fund me to open a jujitsu academy. Uh, and I said, I opened my Jiu Jitsu Academy 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. Well, you can't tell me you didn't use some of it for renovations. And I thought I did. I bought shortly after the GoFundMe, I bought another row of mats. Yeah. Remember when we made the yeah. upstairs three feet wider? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, hey, he's right. I bought one. It was 2,200 bucks to expand my Jiu Jitsu Academy by about 500 square feet. And that was cool. And we did it. Yeah. 
And I was just like, no, fuck. Like, I'm not getting caught up in this shit, dude. Nope. I, I don't have to explain myself to motherfucking anyone, dude. Nope. You know? And and you know what? It goes back to the judging thing where, because I'm a pretty judgmental person, but I've been trying to work on it. I'm judgmental as fuck. So am I. But I've been but trying it, to work on it because- Bro, it goes back into what, what you said before we started recording, your thoughts versus your actions. Yeah. Because it-, it if if we lived out our thoughts, I'd already be have been publicly executed. Me you know too. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because I got some wild fucking thoughts Fuck that go yeah. through my mind. Oh, me too. Right? Banks you can't, would be robbed. People would <laughs> yeah. be fucking yeah. decapitated. Yeah, it'd, I, it'd yeah. get crazy. I would. But your thoughts versus your actions. They're different. They're different. That's where becoming a man comes in. Because a lot of men have not gained control of their emotions yet. So they're 40 years old and they fucking go black or they go red or they're fucking flying off the hinges all the time. Part of being a man is being a rock in a mountain. And that doesn't mean that your thoughts aren't going to be fucking crazy. Well, bro, it's like it's, it, I just flew back from Florida and I was watching people board the flight. Mm-hmm. Right. And bro, do you know how many people it, it feels like it's getting worse because I travel all the time. Half the fucking plane was obese and masked up, masked up again. Like that lift that was that mandate on flights was lifted what a year ago? Do they not know that their breath is their spirit? Well, bro, they, fuck no, they don't. Know, they don't that, know shit, it's dude. Like, dude, you're not gonna let me. Like, no one's gonna s- tell me to snuff my spirit. But what made me realize? Because you said like about being judgmental. Yeah, man, I'm thinking, and I'm being judgmental as fuck, dude. Yeah, well, I but mean, I, but now what I'm trying to do is almost, almost when I see that kind of thing. Instead of thinking like, what a useless fucking motherfucker, man, there's, there, there are people that need help. Yeah. I hope, I hope that instead of you fat piece of shit, I wish you'd just fucking die because you're a waste of fucking air, which used to be my thoughts. Yeah. I've been thinking like, you know what? It's fucked up. You're a special person. There's a special soul inside that body that's capable of greatness. And, and you're, you're stifling it. And you've been lied to. You've been tricked. You've been bamboozled. Maybe like... Well, bro, again, like, uh, fuck, it always goes back to Andy Frisella because I listen to Real AF all the time. But he says, he's like, we have to look at all of these people as victims of propaganda. That's what, you shouldn't hate that person. And it's hard, right? It's it hard. Is, it is. It's hard because if, especially if they bought off on the propaganda to the point where now they're, they're pro- propelling it forward. Now they're part of the fucking machine, right? Yeah. But the true enemy are the people that thought up thought up all this shit and projected it on c- civilization? Yeah, you know. Yeah. And and so what what is the right answer of if you're culpable or if you're a victim, bro? I don't know. I don't know either. It's gonna be that's a hard thing to decipher. And you know, as society continues to plummet, if that's what happens, all these motherfuckers that were like fucking shaming you for not getting vaccinated and, and all the, like all the fucking uh, command staffs that fired people yeah. because they didn't get vaccinated. Dude, if you fired me cause I didn't get vaccinated and, and I lost my fucking house, I'm coming for you. Oh dude. Okay. So, so now it's like, okay, well it, where is the, I have compassion because you were a victim to the people I'm coming for you. And that, that line gets very fucking murky, dude. It does. It does. But um, the person, the fat chick on the plane, she didn't, she didn't do that to me. No, you know what I mean? So so there, there is, there's discern. There's, it goes back to, you have to be able to use your own judgment. Like, I think that people aren't in tune enough with their own, I want to say feelings, but it's not, it's not their fucking feelings. It's like in tune with what's right and what's wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Like, I don't, I don't know what it's called. Your intuition. When I look at this person, I used to just be so angry and bitter and fucking hate that they were pieces of shit in my mind. And I've been focusing like that's low vibration. That's bad energy. That's, that's no good. Bro. The army used to teach uh, the army core leadership values. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can spout these off after 20 years. Uh, Loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. I like that. And so that, that, that was like the ethos that we learned as 18 year old men in boot camp, Right. Yeah. 
And there's blocks of instructions on these. And I think the military used to be an honorable organization or maybe on the lower levels it was. Yeah. I bet they're teaching bullshit there now. Oh. But uh, the block of instruction on integrity was, it's, it's very fucking simple. They have to break it down to 18 year olds that just want to fight and fuck, right? Yep. They said, do the right thing. That's what integrity is. When you're presented with a choice, you choose the right thing. And I remember the drill sergeant standing up there. He's like, listen up, privates. You know what the right thing is. You know. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what the question that comes across your plate is. In your own head, you know what the right answer is. And you have to condition yourself to choose right. Yeah. Bro, that's a fact. That's a fact. You, every fucked up thing I've ever done, and there's a million of them. You knew. I knew goddamn well. Me too. Me too. There's a part of getting pulled to the other side. <laughs> it's fucking compelling. It is. And people is. will call that Satan. They yep. will call that evil, whatever it is. But there, there's a duality. There is a force trying to pull you that way too, man. Yep. Absolutely. But the thing is, you have to have that opposing force to make the other side so of that you possible. Know. Yeah. I call it following your heart. Yeah. And if you follow your heart, this is this is my my solution to life right now. Follow your heart. You fucking know deep down. Your cells know. Your ancestral lineage within you knows what's right and what's wrong. If you follow your heart, there will be no consequences ever because there are no consequences for following your heart. Yeah. Okay. And How, you might you might get publicly executed. Sure. But that's not what we're saying. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. Now, with that, if you start to weigh at, weigh it out, you start to let's just take the vaccine thing. That was the most recent thing. Okay. You don't want to do it in your heart. You fucking don't want to do it, but your livelihood, whatever, all these different things are on the line, but you even know that if you take it, there's a chance you might die. Yeah. A lot of people okay. were fearful okay. of it and, and not even like the new world order shit that yeah. you were talking about. But just like, this is brand new. Yes. This is weird. So, so if they are weighing out that option at all, they're giving that means evil they're a seat already the going to, they're already, they're already going against their heart. Yeah. You don't have to weigh out options when you follow your heart. You don't have to make decisions. It's already decided. Yeah. Okay. So when you don't know what to do. Instead of fucking flying off the hinges, follow your heart. We all have one. If you're walking around, you have it. Pay attention to it. It's important. Your heart says different things than your mind. And for the better part of my 30-year-old life, I used my mind, which we need. It's very important. However, my mind is crazy. Yeah. My heart is not crazy. My heart knows one thing, and that's love. And that's it. And so if you're not going to go towards the love side, which is trust, right? You can't have trust without love. Everything is love, not love, like fucking love, like unconditional, like just positive, positive energy. Yeah. Love. Yeah. That's what your heart is. And so anytime you're going to waver off that, just know that there are consequences for not following your heart. It doesn't have to be death, but there's other, you're going to accrue karmic debt. Yeah. In some way, shape, or form. And I don't know what that looks like for you. But for me, I've done enough of the bad shit and had enough karmic debt accrue and fuck shit up that I try very hard to follow my heart all the time. And so far, my life has fucking catapulted in a positive way. Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Well, bro, I think that's a good spot to wrap it up because yep. I got no gi coming up here shortly. Um, the Compassionate Viking... 17 episodes already released. It's on all the major fucking Spotify, Apple. Are you on all the little ones too? Yeah, I think so. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. And uh, I, I know this episode, I wanted to really focus on like what you're doing yeah. with, with this trajectory and this, this new fucking mission. But let it be a lesson for everybody, man. Like if you want to start a podcast, don't kick the can down the road next week. Go buy the equipment, spend the $600, go to guitar center and start that. But don't let this episode be about a podcast. No, we're going to do an episode soon with the, the uh, owner of the production company I work with to really dive into how 
to start a podcast. Okay. And that'll be a cool episode because I know a lot of people want to. Yeah. But the other side of it is, is don't let this be about a starting a podcast. Let this be about starting your fucking life mission. Yes. Tomorrow or the next day. Because, bro, what I've realized, planning, and planning's good. You need plans, right? But over planning is just another word for procrastination. Yes. Yes. And uh, I have a message on that exact thing. You cannot wait for perfect, okay? If you wait for perfect, you might wait your whole life. I was doing this like on the farm, waiting to acquire the right materials and the the right screws and the right lumber and the right everything. Fuck that. I would I would have never started yet. I still wouldn't have accrued everything. Yeah. And I already got a farm going. So don't worry about perfect. There's no perfect time for anything. Is there a perfect time to quit your job and start your own thing? No. Yeah, is there a perfect time to have a kid? Yeah. Fuck no. Fuck no. Everyone, yeah, perfect time to get married, all these different things. There's no perfect time. The time is now. And then in hindsight, you go, thank God I started when I did. I'm yeah. so I'm so grateful that I'm not starting right now. Fuck yeah, dude. All right, man. I fucking appreciate it. Yep. You guys can get a hold of me on Instagram at Tyler Stanaway. You can uh, email me at stanawayrootsandravens at gmail.com. And... Fucking if, if you feel any of the information that I share or have shared or find value in it, please, please share the show, man. That's how we get more people to to connect with and more freedom fighters. Fuck yeah, man. Right on. Let's right. go.